This story started from the royal court on the day when the king's 17th prince, Heel, turned 15. On his 15th birthday, he finally became an adult, and to celebrate it, the king granted Heel a dominion of his own. However, Heel wasn't that happy since the place he was granted was supposed to be messed up and he had to heal it himself. And so, he was taken to the island on a boat. When he saw the land, he couldn't be any more disappointed seeing that the island he was granted turned out to be a mere bunch of reefs. The place's name was Xiao Reef, and reaching there from the capital took him 15 days on the boat. This island was so remote that even pirates wouldn't bother themselves by going near it and leaving it alone. After leaving him near the island, the escorts who came with him immediately turned back, without even checking if Heel would be able to land there safely. But either way, this place was his post, and he couldn't even see where he was supposed to land there. This place which was just a big rock was now the dominion of the 17th prince of the kingdom of Sandfales. His other siblings mocked him when he was granted the Xiao Reef, because he was already miserable from having poor abilities. And the bigger disappointment for him was that he didn't have a proper crest. A crest was something everyone was born with, and his brothers had awesome crests on them granting them very strong powers. The crest he had was unknown, and nobody could figure out what it exactly does. He tried himself trying many ways to see if his crest would react but nothing worked which just brought upon shame on their family. He had tried earlier to ask his father for at least a representative, but the king was proud of his words and couldn't make changes to it just because of his request. He understood that he was basically exiled or expelled to an uninhabited mountain of rocks. He started to think of things like being executed for treason would have been better than this, but he didn't want to die. He saw a lesser bunch of rocks and decided to try landing from there trying his best not to smash his boat into them. He used wind magic to do so, but his magic was so weak that it couldn't even move a feather. He somehow made a harsh landing and took out his supplies from the boat. He decided to store them somewhere safe first, and found a cave in the distance. He took his supplies to the cave but what he saw there was just horrific. He saw dozens of dead skeletons lying around which were clearly of those who drifted to this island but didn't survive. He was scared but he didn't have any other option but to make do with it. He put the supplies inside anyway, and looked at the ocean with a hopeless look in his eyes. He found the site beautiful, and it was also far away from all the strife in the capital, but he wished the situation was a bit different. He slapped himself to wake up his senses and decided that he was going to survive this no matter what. He decided the steps to go about, which were to first ask a passing ship for help but make sure it wasn't someone from the same country. His options were low since people did avoid the reef and there were no routes around here either. He also had to deal with other surviving problems, since the food and water he brought would only last about a month for him. He couldn't rely on his magic, so he figured that he would need to store rainwater in any barrels and fish. He decided to start cleaning the cave first and bury the bones lying around since they were not a good sight. He took out pickaxe to start digging, and then he heard the voice that he acquired a mining tool. He wondered what was this voice that came directly inside his head. He heard the voice again and this time he asked what it was. The voice belonged to his crest, Cave King, which also had an advisor feature which made it unable to speak to him. This was the day he found out that the crest he was born with was actually the Cave King and he wondered why it activated now of all times. He understood it might be because he had never been to a cave or mines in the royal capital. After that, the crest informed him that it also boosted his mining skills and supports, so he could rank up inside the cave. It was too much information at once for him, and he decided to start mining. The crest started its effects and in his sight, the cave started shining at some particular spots. The shining white parts were the most suitable places to mine, and it was calculated properly for him so as to avoid any cave falls or breaks. He gave it a try and hit one of the shiny places in his front, which caused a strong blow to the spot. He was surprised to see how effective his mining was because of his crest, and since he was well supported with the night vision effect from the crest, he could continue mining without any problems. He decided to start first by making a room to sleep for himself and kept mining with determination for some time. Soon, he even started to have fun doing it. He mined a few meters further into the cave, which made him notice that his mining rate and strength was increasing the more he advanced inside the cave. It was because the amount he could dig was increased due to ranking up of similar skills, and then the crest advisor asked him if he wanted to retrieve the 168 rocks he had dug up to now. He wondered where the retrieved rocks would go, but the crest informed him it would be stored within the crest. He again kept digging more and more, which eventually led him to notice it was being hard to mine with all these rocks lying around him. He decided to retrieve the rocks, and they went to his inventory like Minecraft. 
the crest further added the automatic retrieval option to support him, and he realized that he might make it to the other side at this rate, so he decided to dig downwards now. After digging a bit more, the crest informed him that he was now 10 meters below the point he started from. However, he was still not sure what meters were, and he took a break to look at his inventory. He was amazed to see that he got copper, bronze and even gold ores from just mining here. Although he figured that gold might not be much help on an uninhabited island, and then another rock picked his interest. It was the magic stone, which he wasn't sure how it could be used. The crest also had the feature to provide him information on the rocks, so it made him learn that the magic stone could be used to increase the magic power of the user, and the bigger the magic stone was, the more magic would increase. After that, the next stone to pick his interest was the turtle stone, which could be used to increase the lifespan of a person by one day. Finding something like this which could even increase lifespan was such an amazing discovery for him and he was grateful for having this amazing crest now. And now, even his bad opinions for the Xiao Reef turned into realization of how incredible this domain was. He got so focused on mining now that he completely forgot about looking out for ships to escape. Soon, he reached about 30 meters into the cave, and he got tons of rocks and ores in his inventory now. Among them, the stones of which he was most curious about were the magic stone and turtle stone. He figured it would be great if he could use more advanced magic, and with that in mind, he used all the 90 magic stones he had on himself. After using them, he was surprised that he couldn't feel anything different after using them, so he decided to directly test it out by cleaning the path he came from digging. He used wind magic now, and it completely filled the whole cave with wind and cleared all the rubbles, bones, stones and everything along the way and sent them flying outside the cave. He was a bit shocked by seeing this was his own power and couldn't believe just 90 magic stones powered him up this much. After that, a slime got attracted by his magic and came to him directly. The slime was not hostile towards him, but instead seemed to like heal, whereas he wondered what it was. After three of that, he got used to this life here. He started his day with checking up his tools and food to prepare for the usual digging. He made the slime he met three days ago as his companion and named it Shell. This happened. When three days ago slime came to him, he remembered what slimes were. Then the crest informed him that he could tame the slime, and taming the monsters would make them follow him. It didn't work on the hostile monsters, but for those who could be tamed back were hated by the kingdom where he used to live. But here in this cave, there was no one who would judge for whatever he does, and he tamed the slime and gave him the name Shell. He was glad to have another living being with him and he thought that Shell couldn't understand him. But surprisingly, Shell could understand him a little bit, and it started supporting Heal in his mining activities by becoming his support. Shell was surprisingly smart according to him, and so he could now reach where it wasn't possible before. He also started to use some gestures to tell Shell what he wanted it to shape into next time. And thanks to that his minings progressed even faster than before, as much as triple times than before. And with this increasing progress, he had consumed 500 magic stones on himself, and now with his powered up magic, he didn't have to worry about food anymore. And in the nights, Shell would also become his pillow in the exact shape he wanted it to be. Later while mining, he found around 10 more slimes and it could be easy to communicate with them, showing how special the Shell was amongst others. It was okay with him although as long as they didn't come in his way of mining. He slept wondering what he would dig up tomorrow. And next morning, Shell woke him up as if trying to tell him something by jumping around unusually. He wondered why Shell was doing it, and noticed the direction Shell was trying to point out. He noticed there was somebody, and immediately rushed there, only to find three beings who were drifting towards his island. They were green goblins, and it seemed that their boat crashed into the rocks. He was hesitant since they could prove to be dangerous for him and because of that most humans used to kill goblins at first sight. But Shell wanted him to help them, and he himself figured that he wouldn't feel good if he just left them to die here. He used a recovery spell on them, and took them to a safer place. After that, he immediately left them in a safe spot, and once their lives were out of danger, he got back inside the cave. He asked Shell to inform him if anything changed in their condition and left him to watch over them. He knew if he were to be too careless with the goblins, then they might just attack him. He thought that he might be okay even if something happened, thanks to his strength and magic power. He was a bit anxious but decided to calm down and get back to mining. He started digging, and he felt good by mining. It was as if it became his hobby which made him forget everything else, and soon he checked if there was anything new in his inventory. This time, he found two new stones, one of shining stone which doesn't lose its shine, and the second one was the misogi stone which had the power to lift any type of curses from anyone. 
He figured these two wouldn't be of much help since he already had night vision, and there wasn't anyone who would curse him at this isolated place. He decided to just keep digging, and after some time, Shell came to signal him that the goblins were awake. He went to check up on the goblins, and hid himself when he could hear them, so as a safety measure he decided to overhear their conversation. Meanwhile, one of them seemed to be checking out Heel's food and others tried to tell not to do so. The general goblin, El noticed Heel's presence and immediately got on his guard. The princess goblin told El to lower his weapon because Heel was the one who saved them. El couldn't do so since he thought of Heel as a dangerous person. Whereas, Heel was surprised to know that they spoke the same language, which could mean that the goblins might be from the same continent as his. He told them that he didn't plan on doing anything to them, but El couldn't trust a human just like that. El stated that he might be planning something since the expression on Heel's face said so. Heel was confused to hear that, then Shell turned into a mirror, and when Heel saw his face in it, he was himself shocked just how scary look he was making right now. He looked super dangerous like this, and he realized that he had been becoming something else by mining a lot daily. He fixed his expression, and told all that they could eat his food since he could just get more, as he demonstrated how he could get more food by using wind magic to catch fishes. El was shocked to see how strong Heel was, and asked him why he didn't just kill them if he was this strong. Princess Goblin Rai tried to make El understand, but she wasn't feeling and collapsed on the ground. They got worried about their princess, and Heel asked if she wasn't healed yet. The elder goblin Vari told him it wasn't the case, and Rai was actually cursed with the life-shrinking curse. They fell in despair seeing that their princess reached her time to go, and started shedding tears of sorrow. Heel saw the things turning out bad, and he stopped Vari and El from giving their own lives along with hers. He told them that he could cure her, to which El expressed his anger stating they tried everything there was. After that, he decided to use the Misogi stone he found earlier, and used it on Rai. After that, since her lifespan was shrunken as well, he used 79 turtle stones on her. They wondered where Heel got those rare stones, but the thing that mattered to them was that their princess Rai came back to life feeling better than before. Rai was confused about what happened since she thought she was dead. El realized that Heel was not a bad person, and seeing that he was his princess's savior, he bowed down his head on the ground in apology, and also left cracks on it. Heel asked him that they should join him and eat something as they introduced themselves to each other. While he was also surprised to see how strong El himself was remembering that he broke the stone floor with just his head earlier, showing that goblins were surely scary. As they sat down together, El apologized for everything and introduced himself as General El from the Belden tribe. Rai followed the introduction with hers, being the daughter of Rodden who was the king of Belden tribe and then the elder goblin Vari introduced himself as the shaman of the Belden tribe. Following their introduction, Heel also introduced himself as the prince from the kingdom of Sandfails, but he used to be. El thought that he could use all the magic he saw before because he might be strong as the prince, to which he declined and explained it was because of the magic stones he dug up. Heil then asked them why they were here on this island, to which El told him their story of how their hometown was burned down by the orcs. Their royal family was almost killed entirely, and only Princess Rai survived. And now they were looking for a new place to live for the past year. They've been to many clans but none took them in, while humans kept chasing them away as well. So they tried to head towards the new world with the survivors, but now things happened and their ship ran down. Now they weren't even sure if others were safe. Princess Rai told Vari not to feel responsible, as even if they stayed on land, their fate would have turned out the same as now. She thanked Heel for his help in saving monsters like them. Heel told them it was fine while feeling bad for them hearing what happened. Rai stated that she won't live long, but she was glad that the pain in her chest had gone away and she could die in peace. Heel told her it was too soon to give up and told her that there were many turtle stones lying dormant under the ground, and using them, they could keep extending her life as much they wanted. He assured them that if he keeps digging for a week, then he might be able to buy her more than a year of lifespan. El stated it was too much to ask from him, so he offered if he could also help him digging as well. Teal told him it was fine. El and Rin thanked him for saving her life, and she asked why he gave her something so precious. He told her not to worry because he was digging just for fun and it made him glad to have someone else with him now. She got emotional knowing that she could live more, which would be a natural thing for anyone who was saved from dying. Heil told her it wasn't a big deal, and wondered what he should do now. He had enough ice axes, but he thought if he could do something about the parts where they would dig. The crest informed him that he could give parts of his powers to the monsters he tamed as well. He then asked them if they would like to be tamed by him, and explained it was for the reason so that they could dig with him. He assured them that they were free to decide since he would give them turtle stones either way. 
They were thankful for the offer and decided to join him as his tamed monsters. Rai also agreed to serve him since she felt like helping everyone instead of just sitting back and letting them work for her sake. She also wanted to repay her debt to him and then he started thinking of names for them. He named El to Elvin and Vari to Varus and Rai to Rene. They liked their new names and promised to offer everything to him from now on. After that, he took out the shining stone and used it to make torches for others since they didn't have night vision like him. They could see the shining places which were actually the places more suitable to dig, and then he demonstrated them how to mine from now. He hit the wall in front of him and it completely broke down. He told them they would be able to dig like this, let them know that he didn't start out like this either. The next concern was to collect the rocks, since others didn't have the automatic retrieval skill. He then instructed Shell to give instructions to the other slimes on how to collect the rocks and ores. He believed that practice made a person perfect, and so all of them started mining together from now on with collective efforts. The cave he was digging became a lot livelier from that day onwards. After that, Heel was remembering one of many tragic moments from his past, when he was being bullied by others for being weak. He was trying to protect a monster who was being tied and tortured by those bullies. He had something in his neck which reminded him of that incident. Then Elvin asked him if he was feeling tired after digging a lot, and Rihanna also asked him if he was alright. He heard Rihanna then told them he was just thinking some things, and he couldn't be tired from digging because of his cave king crest. She told him not to overwork himself, and he assured her that he won't. Then he smelled something good, and it turned out to be the smell of apple pie which Rihanna made for everyone. They were joyed by getting something new to eat. It's been three days since Heel met the goblins, and in this short time, they made some new things, like a bathroom, a reservoir and a simple kitchen. And thanks to that, he could eat Rihanna's cooking which was so good and whatever she made, it was always delicious. She was glad to see he liked it, and he was glad to see that Rihanna could make use of things he brought with him from the country. Elvin didn't know mining could be this fun, and Varys shared the same opinions on that. They were glad to be working to extend their princess life, and she thanked them for that. Their situation was getting better and better day by day, but there were still many things to do for them. He didn't have some necessary resources yet, and some other concerns were getting more variety of food other than fishes and clothes, since their current ones were deteriorating slowly. He didn't have much hope with help from the outside, by stopping a ship if it comes and using his gems to buy supplies. But the main thing he felt different in himself was that he had slowly started to think and have concerns like a real lord of a country. He decided to keep mining further for now, and wanted more turtle stones for Rihanna and hoped to find some more new stones. Soon, he came up against a hollow place while mining and he went to check what was inside. He found different looking stones there which were orange in color like a sunset. They looked different than the shining stones, and after walking a bit further, he noticed that the dirt here was different. Suddenly, when he raised his head, he saw a very big spider in front of him. He didn't move at first as he looked his face in the spider's eyes from up close and was scared if he would be eaten now. He started using magic to counter the spider, but unexpectedly the spider ran away from him. After he looked at the situation properly, it turned out that the spider was the more feared one here, since it wanted to protect its children. He understood it and felt sorry for scaring it like that. Then the crest informed him of tameable monsters being found, and after some time, while Elvin was waiting for Heel to return, he got startled when he noticed that his boss returned with the spiders behind him. Heel apologized to him for startling him like that, and told the others that he just got the cave spiders to join him. Varus was surprised to see how big these spiders were since usually they were just about as big as him. Varus informed Heel that the silk from these spiders was stronger than iron, and they had powerful poison in their fangs, and they were also known for their dangerous nature including eating monsters and people. He learned then that the dirt in the back of the cave was actually their waste. Varus told them the good news next, that the dirt from cave spiders could be used for raising crops which would make farming easy for them. After that, Varus asked where they could farm at a place like this, then Heel said that he had something to show them. He guided them to a tunnel and told them to peek inside. They were surprised to see many stairs, and asked him where did they came from. Heel answered that he had done it on his way back with Terran, the spider since the path was too narrow for her. He made these stairs and widened the area with the help of new features of his power as the cave king. He could now shape the mind area in any way he liked, process and synthesize things in his inventory, and some more features like adding night vision to even tame monsters now. Elvin and others were glad for this progress and they got motivated to work even harder the next day. Heel announced a welcome party for Terran and its children, 
and for that, Reen offered to grill lots of fishes. He planned to remodel this island in future and add more things to it. Elvin and Varus kept making ice axes, and he'll help them at the parts when they didn't know how to work. He stated that being able to make iron tools in a place like this was itself a huge advancement for them, while Rihanna was tasked with knitting clothes with spider silk. After that, he instructed them to do the wastes at one place, and soon he learned another thing about Terran which was its speed that was faster than anything he knew. After that, he used the place collected with spider waste to sow an apple seed, which grew fully in almost no time. Teal didn't expect it would be this quick, and understood why Terran was so big. Then he realized that the growth of the tree was not because of the waste but the sun stones found in that cave. He couldn't find those stones anywhere else, so he knew he should save them carefully. He called out Rihanna and left her in charge of the sun stones and the planning of plantations. She asked if he was sure of tasking her with it and promised to not let him down. However, he believed that he could trust her with it, and then he went back with the help of a riding shell all the way back. Now that everyone was focused on mining, he figured that he could focus on mining even more himself. Right now, his current goal was to mine more turtle stones, and up to now Rihanna had gained 5 years of lifespan. But he was still worried about her, since she was 15 just like him and he could guess that she might want to live more. So with that in mind, he started mining knowing that he was the most efficient miner amongst everyone. While digging, he came up with a white stone and collected it. The white stone surprisingly turned out to be a dragon orb, which could bring a person back to life. He immediately called the others to dig where he was, but even after digging a lot at that place, he couldn't find any more of the dragon orbs. Then he figured it would have been scary if he were to be able to resurrect as many people with dragon stones as he wished. He decided to keep the stone outside of his inventory. Then he heard Elvin calling out for him quickly. He wondered what might have happened and left the dragon orb at a spot, and went upstairs quickly. The stone, however, rolled down and fell on a corpse. Elvin informed Heel that he could see their comrade's ship coming towards them, and he was sure it was them. They were glad to see the other goblins from their tribe were alive, including Elvin's daughter. Heel then told Elvin that it would be dangerous for their ship to dock here, so he should take his boat towards them. Apparently, he thought that Elvin and others might leave with their tribe, and so he gave them many sunstones as parting gift, so that they would be able to restore their tribe anywhere they wanted. Elvin was confused about what he meant, to which Heel told him that they should leave this remote place since it would be better for them. He said they would start trading with each other when they find a good place to settle soon. It made them confused to hear the words of them leaving him. Then Elvin shouted his request out at Heel to not abandon them like this. He made it clear to him that they won't be leaving him since they made a pledge to always be there with him, and never leave him. Reen stated they were his subordinates, and then Heel felt good but he reminded them that they might not have another chance to leave like this. She then asked him that he should come with them if that was the case. He looked back at the mountain of rock, and thought about the time when leaving this place was all he wanted, but now the situation was different. Reen understood how he felt about the place, and she made it clear that she wouldn't leave either if he wasn't. Elvin and Varus shared the same opinions. It made him emotional, but then suddenly the tides of the ocean became disturbed and started to sink the ship. Elvin got concerned about them since most of the goblins on board couldn't swim. They immediately took the boat to rescue them, and seeing them running, Heel knew they might not be able to make it in time. The situation called for his bad memories to flash before his eyes, for him being unable to do anything for others. But this time, he was different, so he immediately ran towards the edge of the cliff and jumped right down the cliff with a focused look in his eyes. He had faith in him that this time, that he wasn't hopeless anymore. He remained strong in his mind putting his faith in his crest of the King of Cave, as he used the freeze magic on the ocean. He froze all the water around the sinking ship, and stopped it from falling upside down. He was amazed to see how strong he was now after using the power of over 8,000 magic stones. He kept the ice strong and told Elvin and others to cross the ice to save them. Elvin got right onto the task, but he slipped on the ice. Heel didn't think of that before, and then Terran jumped in along with Heel and took Heel across the ice on her back. Heel realized that Terran's leg could be the key to help here. Then other spider children of Terran also came to help them, and seeing that Elvin was sad to see he couldn't do anything and felt grateful towards the spiders. Shell also joined Heel to help along with the other slimes. Heel told everybody to help the drowned ones, while he kept the ocean tides from reaching others with his magic. The slimes, spiders, Elvin and others worked together to rescue everyone and once the rescue was successful, no casualties were there. Heel provided heal magic to everyone who was injured in the process. Reen thanked Heel for saving everyone, and couldn't be sure how they could repay his debt. Heel told them that he was happy enough seeing that everybody was safe, while Elvin was crying after meeting his daughter Fu after a long time of thinking that she was no more. 
His happiness couldn't be enough to see she was alive, and others were happy to see an emotional reunion. Heel stated that he couldn't have done anything by himself and was grateful for the help of spiders, slimes and Rene, Elvin and Varus to help in saving all of the Belden tribe. He couldn't have done something like this in the past, and seeing how different it was now, he couldn't thank them enough to help him improve himself. After that, Varus mentioned there was a man standing behind Heel and asked who was him. The sudden appearance of a strange man was unexpected, and he asked Varus if the guy could have been on the ship. Varus replied there wasn't anyone like him, and he wondered himself if Heel might have met him in the cave, but that wasn't the case either. The guy was naked, so Heel went to him and tried to communicate with him but the man just walked away to join the others to eat food. The man was just hungry, so Rena decided to roast more fish for them, while Heel and Varus wondered who this man might be. Next day, Heel was in the middle of making rooms for everyone who just arrived on the island. He had tamed everybody before and came up with names for everyone. Although the circumstances may not have been the best, he was glad enough to see that his island was slowly becoming much livelier than before. However, it also caused the urgency for him to increase the production of supplies and food. Rihanna came to Heel and asked him to try a juice she just made. It was the grape juice which came out really tasty since it was made from the fresh grapes, which Rihanna had grown with the help of sunstones and the grape seeds she found on the boat. She told him that the plantation was small for now, but in a few years, it would be full of all sorts of fruits. When he heard the word years coming out from Rene, who didn't used to think about the future before, but she could do it now made him really happy. He told her if there was anything he could do to help her, she could always count on him. He then heard other goblins having trouble with the strange and unknown man, since he was just roaming here there staring at everyone. The goblin asked him to go somewhere else as his stares were making him feel awkward. The goblin called the man Mappa and everybody else also started calling him Mappa from some time now. Mappa then picked up the items which the goblin made and put them back as if they were not that good. The goblin got mad and asked Mappa to try it himself, handing him over a hammer, and suddenly Mappa's eyes got filled with determination. Mappa then started making the items himself, and he looked really professional at it. Heel and others could see that Mappa looked like he was used to it, and when Mappa started hitting the hot iron rapidly, they were left amazed. Mappa then quickly finished making the ice axes, and it came out really fine and elegant like a work of art. He wanted to test out the one pickaxe made by Mappa against the usual ones, since he had a doubt if his pickaxes were good enough to use. After using them side by side to mine in the cave, the doubts he had were blown away. The pickaxe Mappa made was significantly stronger than the usual one, even if it was made from the same iron. After that, he noticed the spot where he kept the dragon stone. He was sure where he could have left it, but it was nowhere to be found, and he noticed a surprising mark on the hole in the ground. He guessed that there must have been bones in the shadow of the rocks, and realized that Mappa had been brought back to life by the dragon stone. He was happy to have gained another reliable comrade, and thanks to Mappa's help, they managed to level the coast of the island. Not only that, but they also took the ship apart and started rebuilding it. They also started making progress in bigger projects, and soon he found more slimes and tamed them to help the transportation of rocks. Everything was going well except one thing, which was the turtle stones. He observed that they were getting fewer turtle stones now than before. Reen told him she was okay with the turtle stones she already had, but the 10 years of lifespan they got for her seemed lesser for a girl her age. Heel then had a realization that helping her was not the only reason he had been going at it, but he honestly wanted Rihanna to stay with him longer. He wanted to dig more and develop the island with her but suddenly he confronted a huge room behind the cave he just dug. He had thought that this island was just an uninhabited island but there seemed to be signs here of something being happening to an inhabited island long ago. He decided to explore the room and collect the things he would come across here. He discovered a heart stone, which could become the core of an artificial organism. He could create dolls now, or more comrades for himself. He then proceeded with collecting the golden stone in the center of the room. It was a changed stone which would allow a monster to evolve. In a more detailed explanation, the changed stone could change a monster into another species, and inherit the age along with the personality of that new species. He found these features freaky at first, then an idea came to his mind. And later on, he decided to talk about this with Varus, Rihanna and Elvin. Varus affirmed him that he was aware of this stone as it was mentioned in their legends, and he asked Heel if he knew any species which resembled goblins. He remembered hobgoblins and leaf goblins, then Varus explained him further that those goblins used to be regular goblins before. But the ones who wanted more power turned into hobgoblins, and those who wanted to live deep into the forest turned into leaf goblins. They had used this changed stone as well, 
and from these examples, Heel understood what evolving mean. Varus was surprised to see the stone for the first time, and Heel remembered that the Cave King Crest informed him earlier that the stone could evolve and renew the lifespan. He asked them if they wanted to try it, and Elvin stated he was curious but passed since he liked his body as it was. Then Rihanna spoke up that she wished to try it and become able to use magic to help heal but she was nervous if she should use something so precious. Elvin and Varus were okay with that idea, including heal. He told her that it would be helpful if she could use magic, and above everything else, he wanted her to live longer. His words helped her come to a resolve to want to evolve. He agreed and gave the change stone to her. She held it in her hands and closed her eyes, starting to wish to be able to stay with Heel for a long time, as she thought of the species she wanted to turn into. The stone glowed brighter, and everyone had to close their eyes because of its luminosity. A few seconds later, they saw that Rihanna turned into a cute teenage human girl. She was surprised by her new appearance, but the one more surprised was Mappa who got nosebleed seeing such a beautiful girl naked. Chapter 5 Surprisingly, after a few hours Heel woke up. He wondered when he even fell asleep and remembered how it happened when Rihanna evolved. He woke up to the sight of Rihanna who was keeping his head in her lap. She assured him she was right here for him, and seeing her made him feel flustered. He got up immediately, and still was not used to her new appearance. She told him that he should lie down, because he collapsed all of a sudden before. It happened because he got in front of Rihanna to protect her from Mappa's nosebleed. He told her he was okay now, just a bit tired from before. He asked how long he's been sleeping for and how Mappa was. She told him Mappa was also sleeping, and then he asked if she was alright herself since no one expected that she would look like a human now. She stayed silent for a minute and told him that she didn't actually like her old self. She had been cursed from a young age, and because of it, her body grew sickly over the years because of which her beautiful sisters laughed at her. Then her parents tried to help her but they eventually started to ostracize her themselves too. So that was why, when she changed and looked at herself in the mirror, she turned out exactly how she wanted to be someone beautiful. She apologized to Heel for using such a precious stone on a selfish wish. He told her that she didn't need to say that, as he had changed himself since the time he came to this island. So it was fine for her to have a new life for herself as well, and it would have been a waste if she were to be in a body she didn't like. She thanked him for being so generous and understanding and because her body and new life was given to her by him, she decided to offer her everything to him. He held her hands trying to say something but then noticed Mappa standing behind them watching the situation turn out, which startled both of them. Rihanna's new transformation was shocking news for the Belden tribe as well. Then she made herself clothes from Taran and others' silk. She asked how they looked at her, to which everyone except those who saw her evolving couldn't believe that this happened to her overnight. But once they saw Rena working super hard, they realized it was really her and warmed up to her soon enough. She then devoted herself to study magic and martial arts with her endless ambitions after getting a new life. She her everything and whatever she did, and Heel was happy to see her having fun enjoying her change. Varus came and asked what was Heel thinking, to which he admitted that he was clearly not looking at Rihanna's legs or anything. Varus took it in a straight way, and said that he expected Heel to notice Rihanna's crest which was Farmer. She had the farmer crest which made crops plentiful, so it was a good decision from Heel to entrust plantation to Rihanna. He was surprised to know that a goblin could have a crest as well, to which Varus admitted it was possible. Heel apologized if it sounded rude since he had learned that only humans had crests. Varus then showed him his own crest, the sorcery king which was an incredible crest of its own. He knew how powerful his crest could become, but Varus stated he couldn't use it since he didn't have any magic. He could help Rihanna to help her study magic with the help of his crest, even though he couldn't use them himself. Varus then stated that they should now focus on reclaiming the land from the sea to expand their island with more territory, and increase their crops as well. He figured that he should also create bigger spaces where children could play. Varus mentioned that he would need more raw materials, then Heald told him that he wanted to try something and asked Varus to leave it to him. He noticed that he could use the workshop even outside of the cave, so he used it to make the raw materials like blocks and planned locations. After that, he used water magic to remove the seawater around them, and filled it with rock and gravel, then covered the surface with cage spider's dirt. He figured this much would do for now, and he managed to build a large space out of workshop help. Rihanna, Varus and Elvin went to check the place, then kids followed them. The kids liked the place and thanked Heel for it. He was glad to be of help to them, and Rihanna also thanked him stating she could also use this space to grow great crops here. He was looking forward to it as well, then suddenly a large bird came and attacked Mappa out of nowhere. Then it swallowed Mappa, and goblins got scared since it was Killer Bird who was known to always hunt in flock. 
Peel instructed everyone to get back to the cave, and they started running back. Then one kid fell down, making the situation even tougher for them. Full tried to help the kid while Heel was deflecting the birds with his magic. Then suddenly a bird came charging at Full and the kid, and just in time the neck of the bird got slashed away from the elven's attack. He managed to save his daughter and told her to get out of there. Next, he chopped off the heads of multiple killer birds showing off the true power of a general goblin from the Belden tribe. Peel decided to join Elvin and help him. Then suddenly from behind another bird was charging at them but Rihanna used her shield magic to block it. She told him to do what he needed to, and thanks to her, he could focus on fighting the killer birds. He asked Elvin to be careful and hit only the heads of the birds since they didn't know which one had Mappa inside it. Forrest asked them to come to the entrance, and Heel decided to go for protecting it. Then he remembered that he had the heart stone, and so he came up with an idea to create a large golem from the rocks he had and put the heart stone inside it. The golem killed the birds attacking the entrances with ease, while the bird who ate Mappa vomited him out and a slime caught him just in time. Now they didn't need to worry about hitting Mappa, and he asked Elvin to gather them now. Elvin then used his axes which were tied with ropes made of Terran silk to tie up dozens of killer birds at once. The roll was very strong, and what next was Heel coming in to clutch the birds by freezing them with blizzard magic. He froze all the tied ones in one go, and seeing that, the other killer birds retreated instantly. The other goblins cheered on being victorious, and Elvin was glad to see how amazing his boss performed in the fight. Rihanna then quickly came to heel and asked if he was hurt, and he admitted that he was scared at first, but she was here with him now which made him feel well. Heel's legs were really shaking because it was his first fight against the monsters, and Varus came expressing his happiness to see they were okay, and others followed the same sentiments. He was glad to have come a long way from before and he started feeling proud of himself being the kind of person who could become an actual feudal lord. They returned back to the caves, and he asked Rihanna on the way if they could eat killer birds. She told him they were indeed edible and in fact tasty after roasted. Later in the night, they all had an unprecedented banquet for everybody. He tried eating monster's meat for the first time, and it was really tasty. It was great, and Rihanna was glad to see he liked it and asked him to try soul next, which was also tasty. She noticed that the taste of the meat was a bit different though. She told him it was because the different parts of killer birds tasted completely different depending on which part he ate. He knew there was danger of killer birds now, but the positive side was that he could make them a good source of their food. So he decided to keep the golem on watch for the birds, to which Varus was glad since the killer birds used to stay away from targets bigger than themselves. Varus decided to put a guard unit and stated that they should build walls and watch towers also, which could serve to protect the fields from being damaged by the ocean salt. Teal took the task of stone processing and requested Varus to take care of the planning. He saw that there was a girl staring at him but he couldn't remember her name but he knew she was Elvin's daughter. She reminded him her name herself even though he was the one who gave it to her, it was full. She asked him why he was so strong, to which he told her it was because of using the magic stones, which he got thanks to mining. Full got excited to hear that there were stones like this here, and asked him if she could dig as well. Brianna then told Full that she needed to use a changed stone to evolve and be able to use magic. Full then decided to evolve next, which was not possible since he didn't have any. Elvin then arrived and punched Full for bothering Heel and told her to stop speaking rudely to Heel. Elvin apologized about her, while Heel could see the resemblance between father and daughter quite well. He told Full that she could use the change stone if she managed to find one herself. She got excited after hearing that and decided to join Heel in mining. She promised to be helpful to Heel, and he was also glad to have more hands working on mining now. After that, he used 800 magic stones on Ride to increase her magic power and she took the responsibility to do her best to improve it even further. Elvin told her that she would need to eat properly for that, and soon, the day ended with Heel achieving a reclaimed land with tasty food. This day became the first memorial day in the Shawl Reef. Next day, he decided to visit the cold freezer which was Rihanna's idea to preserve large amounts of food. He made it quite big and caught a cold himself. Because of having a freezer now, they didn't need to worry about meat being spoiled anymore. She stated that frozen caves could store food for even more than a half year. Mappa had decided about the door and got it made from Heel who understood quite easily about which shape Mappa wanted the door to be. Later on, they also renovated the forge which would be taken care of by Mappa and Varus, while Reen took the responsibility to cast freeze occasionally on the frozen cave. She had been becoming a lot more confident about herself, and thanks to Elvins and Varus, they helped in preparing the outer defenses. Seeing things working out well, he could now focus back to mining again. 
Full mentioned that she was surprised to see how well everything went without anything bad happening. She found it amazing how the Cave King could help in achieving this much without caves. She told him that they needed to add some ventilation since it was not good to just keep the dust collected and harm lungs. If something like coal gases were to be accumulated inside, it would surely lead them to be poisoned or the cave itself could explode. Although she knew of a device to send air from inside to outside and decided to ask Mappa to create it later. Full's words proved to be very helpful, and she stated that she had been working in mines since little because she had the crest of a miner. He found it reassuring and allowed her to speak freely if she found anything else to be changed. She was experienced, so she was surely efficient, with having a good intuition for digging up ores. She was his greatest rival since Terran. Then Full asked Heel if he had a father. He replied that he did have one, but it was hard on him to remember his father. He was scared of him as well as his brothers. Even after he acquired incredible powers now, his family was still holding boundless power which was far stronger than his own. He then asked Full if she wanted to be stronger than her father, which was quite obvious. Then Full came up against a hollow cave. She wondered what she could find inside and ran there immediately to check. It was a huge stone room, and she asked if the change stone was also stored in a room like this one. He agreed and she got excited to check around even more. Then one of the statues moved and used fire magic. Heel quickly managed to cast a shield in time to save himself in full. He asked her if she was okay, and then he assessed that the statues were like golems, which could use even magic. Then the golems kept attacking him, and some of them even had swords. They surrounded him in full, but he had a strategy in mind to deal with it. He used wind magic to form storms and managed to throw away the golems flying. Full was alright, and she apologized for rushing ahead without thinking. He was also not expecting to confront golems like these and he signaled Shell to signal others to suspend mining activities. Then Full found a stone and asked Heel if it was a golden change stone, but it turned out to be a sorcery stone which could be used to create dolls. She was disappointed seeing it was not a change stone, and then Mappa came out of nowhere startling her. Mappa started taking out the sword from the destroyed golems happily and went back to the surface. Full wondered how long Mappa was going to stay naked. She asked if all humans were like that, to which Heel answered that was not the case but Mappa was sure excited more than usual. He tried to pick up the sword from another golem but he couldn't lift it. The sword didn't budge even if he and Full tried their hardest together. He tried to collect the sword but the crest informed him that he couldn't collect anything aside from minerals and mined items. He then decided to use a pickaxe to break the sword, but it didn't work either. He kept trying to break the sword and after many attempt, he managed to break it. He wondered what was the sword made of, and it turned out to be orichalcum which was lighter and stronger than metal, and also be used to enchant magic effects. He then looked further into his inventory then he saw something shocking. Meanwhile, back in the main cave, Elvin was trying his hardest to lift the sword which Mappa brought back with him. Soon Heel also returned and asked what was going on. Reel told him about the sword and how everybody was trying to lift it. He told them it would be tough since the sword was made of 300 orichalcum. Full tried to tell her father it was impossible, but Elvin kept trying and he managed to lift the sword thanks to his strengthening of the great warrior crest. However, he couldn't keep it lifted for long and dropped it. Heel quickly went to him and used his recovery magic to heal his wound which wasn't that big fortunately. Full immediately went ahead and hugged her father. She was worried for him and called him idiot for making her worry. He apologized to her and promised to be more careful from now on. Meanwhile, Mappa was easily able to carry the sword and he put it inside the furnace. Mappa belonged to a legendary dwarves race, so he liked to use rare minerals, and with his incredible strength, mysterious techniques and noble spirits, Mappa began creating something from the Orichalcum. Mappa then forged something and came to heal. He gave them the forged item as it seemed that Mappa made it especially for him. It was a pickaxe made from Orichalcum. Afterwards, Mappa continued to create more of the Orichalcum tools, although he liked to stay naked for some reason. Chapter 7 The next day, Elvin was fighting against something and his axe didn't work on it. Then Elvin took it as a challenge and faced the monster from up close. Meanwhile, back in the cave Full was checking the area, and she approved it was perfect now since the air was a lot cleaner thanks to the ventilation hole. He used Mappa's rotating blades which produced tidal energy to bring the fresh air constantly. Full stated that she just wanted to get back to mining, and Heel shared the same opinion, but he wanted to wait a little longer since they were attacked just yesterday. Full then headed to the forge on her own. While Heel was trying to come up with a way for everyone to be able to mine safely, he decided to create new golems but he wanted them to be a little more accurate this time, so he started drawing the design for a golem on the ground. 
he ended up getting carried away and made a design which had everything made of orichalcum and had swords, bow guns, magic stones and all. His smile turned to hilarious, and then Rihanna came to see what he was doing. He startled seeing her suddenly, and she apologized to break his focus while Dee working on something. She asked him if he had some time, and he agreed, so she took him along with her. It was rare for her to talk like this, and she asked him to keep following her quietly. They went ahead to her farm place, and he was greatly surprised to see that the place she took him was the plantations. Apparently, there were many times the amount of apples, grapes and now even lemon and palm trees here. He praised Rihanna for being a great orchid, and she thanked for being complimented for her efforts. But she stated they still didn't have enough for everyone for which she had an idea. She then concentrated and hit the coconut tree with her punch. A coconut fell from the tree then she jumped in the air and cut them with her kicks, thanks to her skills she learned while studying martial arts under General Elvin. He was shocked to see this side of hers as she took lemons and squeezed them into coconut juice and mixed it with water. She reasoned that they would be able to enjoy it in moderation. He wondered where she got this much power and tasted the juice she just prepared. He was mesmerized by the taste of the juice since it contained just the right amount of refreshing sweetness and right acidity. It was even better than the juice he had earlier. Then he heard sounds from the shore, which belonged to Elvin who just dealt with the shell monster. It was a Satan shell which he took down earlier in the back of the island. Elvin told others to be careful if they find one, and told them it was easy to force them open to deal with them. Varus stated that the others shouldn't try that since Elvin could do it because he was powerful. Varus then went ahead and squeezed out something from the shell. Heel asked what it was, while Mappa quickly tasted it and fell on the ground. It was the numbing liquid which was found in the Satan shell which the shell used on its prey. Varus stated in a joking manner that the poison could become a deadly poison. He said that he was just joking, and actually it could be used to harvest purple dye from it. After that, to protect his domain from killer birds, Satan shells and domains, he created 14 new golems and named them from numbers 1 to 14. Numbers 6 to 15 had magic stones in them, while Dot the other two learned defensive magic and the other two learned one of the four attributes. Then the Watcher rang the bell of danger alerting everyone of more Satan shells. They were invading them from the part of the wall which was not completed yet. There were 50 of them which made them doubt if they would be able to deal with all of them. Heel asked Varus what was their weakness, to which he told him that the Satan shells could not withstand lightning attacks. After knowing that, he asked Elvin to leave it to him since he wanted to test out new golems he just made. Elvin agreed to him and asked Heel to call him if there was any trouble. Rihanna asked him if she could also join him since she also knew lightning magic. Heel called out the golem number one, and together with six, seven, and fourteen, 15. He marched forward to the battle against the Satan shells. As the shells came up on the walls and attacked the golems and heal, he instructed 6 and 7 to guard them with shield spells. Then Rihanna used a lightning spell to deal with them in an instant, while Elvin and Varus were looking at how the battle was going against the Satan shells. The golems were like mobile forts with high endurance, and next up, Heel instructed 14 and 15 to fire lightning attacks at them. The shells felt the pressure and used their liquids but golems easily shielded them. And the same process continued by lightening the shells at the end. Elvin was glad to see how well golems were carrying out their job to protect Heel from the numbing liquid. And this ordeal settled quicker than Heel expected. Golems used strong magic throughout the battle, and he praised everyone and Rihanna for their help. After that some of the shells were still left and shot numbing liquid at Heel from behind. Rihanna noticed it just in time and got in the way to protect him. Elvin dealt with this shell and Heel noticed that Rihanna was on him with numbing liquid on her body. She couldn't move since her body went numb, and Heel immediately healed her. She thanked him for that and mentioned that she was all sticky now. He figured she might be feeling gross from it and quickly went to get some water for her. On the way, he noticed there was a pear inside a shell and it was really rare to find one in Satan shells. It was pretty, and then Heel decided to let Rihanna have it since he thought that the pear might suit her. While she got all flustered over it and returned the pearl back to him, then ran away. He realized that he couldn't just give it to her yet, so he kept it. Then the next day while mining, it got time to take a break and he was with Full and Shell this day. But Full didn't want to take rest just yet and kept digging further. He reminded her not to forget to eat, and she told him not to worry as she couldn't do something like skipping something made by a princess. He left the golem number 9 there just in case to ring bell if something happened. They restarted their mining with Golem's protection. He noticed that Full actually had more vigor than anyone else's and then they went to Rihanna to eat. Today's meal was filled with the Satan shells course, which looked so tempting that they couldn't keep themselves away from it. It seemed that Satan shells had made their nests somewhere near them. 
and thanks to them, they got good dyes, food and strong shells but the currents around the Xiao Reef brought something more towards them. The body of a monster. After that, they were checking out the Tyrian purple which was known to be used by nobles, and he decided to use it to make outfits for them. Then Elvin came inside with a serious look on his face. Then he asked Heel to come with him to the reclaimed land. After he went to there to check what happened, he saw there the dead body of an orc who seemed to have been caught in the embankment, and so they pulled it here. He recognized the seal at the hands of the orc which belonged to the same tribe who destroyed and burned down their hometown. The other goblins got furious and started kicking its corpse since their kind were the reason for them to be in a miserable state. Heel stepped in to stop them, but they didn't listen to him. He figured that he couldn't have the right to stop them since their tribes were destroyed by them. Then Princess Rise stopped everyone, and she was angry after seeing the goblins kicking a dead person which was very disgraceful for the pride of their tribe. The goblin mentioned it was because these orcs were the reason that their tribes were ruined by them and not only that but they also set their king's corpse to set an example. But even so, she didn't want them to act the same way as those orcs. She mentioned that Heel should be the one to decide how to deal with this matter. She apologized to him for the inconvenience, and he was thankful for her help since he felt the same just like she said to everyone. He decided to take the charge if he was the chief right now. He could get that these people were very frustrated and he got that they were angry and wanted to vent. But he didn't want them to do something so humiliating like kicking a dead person. He then bowed down his own head and requested everybody to listen to him and contain their anger. Everyone was ashamed of their actions seeing that they led to their boss needing to lower his head. Elvin and Varus immediately asked him to raise his head. Then Heel gave Varus the task to handle the burial of the orc's dead body. Then he noticed soon enough that this body was not the only one but the ocean was brimming with the dead bodies floating everywhere on the surface. They pulled all the dead bodies, which were not just of orcs but some kobolds as well which were goblins' bitter enemies who fought with the orcs too. Heel asked if orcs and kobolds might have fought but it couldn't explain why they were in this remote area around them. Elvin came and told him that there was something very strange, since all the battle wounds on every dead body were really horrible. There were many scars which could not be caused by a weapon like an axe or a sword. He stated it must have been the fangs judging by the size of wounds, but it was too huge and he had never seen ones this big. Even half of some of the orc's bodies were missing. He asked if Elvin was trying to say that they were attacked by something else. Elvin could not be sure, and for now, he suggested that he raise their defenses and watch out for the arms ships. It was unclear for the cave king as well, and then he tasked Varus with the burials, while Elvin was left in charge of the defenses. Meanwhile, Rihanna and he looked for something they could use, since it would be good for them to survive any way they could. Everything was in terrible condition around here, and then he heard something. He asked Rihanna if it was her voice, and then noticed that the voice was coming from a treasure chest instead. He decided to open the lock on the chest with his pick skills and once the box was open, something quickly came out of it and he held it in his hands. It was a puppy, and the puppy immediately started running around on his body. He asked Rihanna what he should do here, but soon the puppy peed on his clothes. He got troubled by it while Rihanna laughed at him and assured that she would wash his clothes. He took a look at the cute puppy and Rihanna hoped that everyone would understand that a baby kobold was not guilty of anything, so she figured that everyone in the tribe should understand as they also needed to take care of the baby kobold. The next day, Heel continued mining and extracting more minerals, for which he liked using the new special orichalcum ice axe made by Mappa. He was concerned inside about the possible battle on coastal waters, and didn't have any answer for the kind of situation yet. So, the best thing to do in this situation was to just keep mining. He wanted to mine more raw materials which could be used to defend the island. He mined minerals, collected them and checked his inventory frequently. He noticed that he started to get lesser magic stones now, which he wanted more of to increase Rihanna's magic energy. He figured that he might need them for full and Varus one day as well, but he could do nothing about it for now. Then his eyes fell upon a new item he got from mining. He wasn't sure what it was, and the Cave King Crest couldn't inform him anything about it either, since it was not a stone but a seed. Then Full came to call him out, and he asked her if she was here to mine as well. She told him about there being a problem with the baby kobold, who was crying continuously, even when Elvin was trying his best to make him laugh by making funny faces. Seeing it not working out, even Terran joined to try making the baby kobold laugh, but he didn't stop crying. Then Full came and kicked Elvin for making the baby cry even more by his expressions which were scary instead of funny. Elvin told her he did the same to make her laugh when she was a baby, but Heel also told him he was just scaring him. Elvin welcomed his boss, and Baby Kobold noticed Heel was here, so he immediately went to him started playing with Heel. 
It turned out that the baby kobold was actually looking out for Heel, since he had been crying since the moment he woke up from the nap. Rihanna stated that the baby kobold might think of him as his father, reminding him that the pee he did on Heel earlier might have been the baby kobold marking him. Faris added that it was the nature of baby kobold to imprint on others. Then Heel asked him what he was doing with the chest in which the baby was found. Faris told him that the chest seemed to be shallower than they thought before, since its inside didn't look as deep compared to how its exterior showed it to be. So Varus thought there was a false bottom in the chest, and even after trying to open it with an orichalcum knife, it didn't work out even though the bottom was made of wood. Heel remembered these kinds of cases were generally turned out to be the special locks, and he used magic to open the false bottom. They were glad it worked out, and he took out the things kept inside the fake bottom composed of three books about the history techniques and scriptures of the Tiberis tribe along with a white stone. He learned from the book names about their tribe and wondered what the stone was about, and his crest informed him it was actually the thought stone which was used to store thoughts. Elvin and Rihanna asked him what it was, while Varus seemed to know about it already. Then the stone started glowing brightly and it activated, emerging the hologram of a female kobold. He wondered who she was, and Rihanna found her pretty along with him. The kobold and recorded thought, was supposed to be for those who managed to open the chest seal. She introduced herself as the queen of the Tiberis tribe, Alhemina, and the baby kobold they found inside the chest was her newborn baby. Elvin was filled with anger towards the Tiberis tribe, but he didn't do anything but hear the message, as she continued to speak that she did not have much time left. She continued to say that their ship was being chased by the legendary beast Leviathan, and they were already exhausted from the battle with orcs earlier. Not only that, but their weapons and magic were also useless against the beast, leaving them no option to escape from its clutches. She requested that whoever opened the chest to be the foster parents of her baby and as the reward for accepting it. She promised to give their two strongest warriors who were tasked with defending the chest, along with their secret books which were generally forbidden to outsiders. She asked them to keep good care of her baby, and if possible, let him hear her last words one day, which was a heartfelt message that the baby's mother Elhemina loved him a lot. Her smile and her message were both received by the baby but he was yet small to understand what it meant, as the recorded thought finished. Everybody was left in thought of what might have happened to those Tibris. Elvin was pissed of how they left their kid to someone else, and he didn't even have those escorts she talked about either. Rihanna told Elvin not to be like that, and he went to tell their watchman about the situation. He'll learn that they knew about Tibris, to which Full told him about the fights between the Tibris and the Belden tribes for a long time over the territories. She was sad because her brother had also lost his life in that war. Heel was relieved to see that Elvin didn't glare at the baby kobold even after hearing the recorded thought. Full told him that her father would never hate a child, and Varus followed saying that the general Elvin blamed himself for being unable to protect his son. Apparently, Varus also lost his brother in the war but he didn't hold any grudges against the baby either. Hearing them clearly, Heel decided to take care of the baby from now on, which made everyone else happy. He then asked them what they should name the baby, and his name wasn't described in the recorded thought either. Rihanna said that she might have intentionally omitted giving name to the baby so that whoever found him could think of the baby as their own. Heel then asked her if she had any idea for the name. She thought about it for a moment, and suggested him to name the baby as real. He liked the name as well, and from that moment on, the baby kobold was named real. However the baby was counted among the tamed ones, even though he didn't do it intentionally but he figured it would be good since the baby would be living in caves as well. Full teased Rihanna for naming the baby from parts of both her and Heel's name. Rihanna got flustered hearing her comment. After that, Varus stated that there is another matter to be addressed now, which was concerning, as they now learned that the mark of giants, making half-bodies blow away and immune to weapons, were all referred to the immense legendary beast, Leviathan. After some time passed from that incident, Mappa came up with his new invention and asked Heel to try and hit it with his magic. He asked if he was sure, then after confirmation, he hit it with a strong flame magic attack. The new invention turned out to be a shield in the hands of a golem, and it was surprisingly far stronger than using the shield magic. Heel felt that he could rely on it, and asked others what were they doing. Varus informed him about another magnificent creation of Mappa, from which they could defend the island from even giant monsters. Heel was still concerned about the beast, and asked Varus if Leviathan was really a mythical monster. Elvin mentioned he didn't believe it either, but apparently, when the group of strong soldiers lead by Queen Alhemina were no match for the beast, and got annihilated, their worries were reasonable. Then Heel heard Reel's bark and when he turned to check, he was high up on the construction logs. Elvin saw he was stuck there and he immediately went to rescue him, 
but in the process, he fell downwards even so he managed to rescue Real. Brianna was glad to see both Real and General Elvin were okay. Elvin thought Real might be in the fields with her at this time, to which she said that Real was really energetic in the field and kept digging quickly. He wandered around a lot and she couldn't keep up. Varus stated that cobbled children used to mature very quickly, and soon Real would be on two legs as well. Heel was a bit surprised to hear that, but then he remembered from the fields about the seed he found earlier. He took out the seed and asked Varus if he knew anything about it. Varus didn't know which seed it was, but Rihanna spoke up that it was Yggdrasil seed. Heel and Varus were surprised, as well as Rihanna herself, about why she knew about that. She claimed it just slipped out of her mouth, and the reason behind that turned out to be her farmer's crest, which bestowed knowledge about all plants. Varus then mentioned that he did know about Yggdrasil, which was a giant tree that blessed all kinds of living beings and apparently it was only known in the legends, just like the changed stone. After that, Heel went around the island to find a good place to mine, and dug up a path there. He saw it was a good opportunity to make a field for themselves. He had enough materials as well, and he told the spiders to get to work for the retrieval since his collecting function only worked inside the cave, and he needed help to remove the dirt. After that, he worked on the place for a while, and the same evening, he finished making a new reclaimed land for themselves. He went ahead to the center of the place to plant the Yggdrasil seed. Rihanna went along and started planting some flower seeds around the place as well which she got from her hometown. He felt it would be really nice, then Mappa suddenly showed up out of nowhere to see the Yggdrasil planting. Rihanna then noticed that the Yggdrasil seed already started sprouting, which was really too quick. He asked both of them if they used the sunstone, but it wasn't the case, so he thought they should try using the sunstone now, and after she used it on the plant, it rapidly grew to become a tree in mere seconds. He knew that the sunstone was really incredible, but suddenly the tree continued to grow even more at a gigantic rate. He asked Rihanna if she was sure that she only used one sunstone. She agreed to it, and then they realized that this much growth wasn't looking good to be near the tree for now. They immediately started running a bit away from the tree. While running, Mappa fell down then he got covered up from everywhere by the tree, and as it kept growing even more, Rihanna and Heel barely managed to get away to a safe distance. And soon, the tree grew completely and it was large enough to be visible from the other reclaimed land which was on the other side of the island, as witnessed by Elvin and Varus. While Rihanna and Heel were surprised to see how big the tree was in itself, proving the reason why it was called the legendary tree, Yggdrasil. After that, Heel recalled his past when there used to be a small monster who kept being bullied by some boys. They kept using attacks on the poor thing while it was tied with chains. They always attacked it whenever they were free to hang around. Their leader was the boy Orin, and they intentionally kept practicing their magic attack aimed at the small thing, even if they were all part of the elite magic academy. Although they made sure not to kill the monster, but slowly damage it every now and then, while Heel used to be scared of them which was why he felt scared of taking some action against them, so he waited once they were done with it. When they were done and returned to the academy, he used to come to the monster, and it turned out that he had also named it as Lopes. He admitted that he had been looking after Lopes every day, but now he was sorry because his healing magic was not strong enough to be able to heal Lopes this time. And by the time passed, Lope's wound kept getting worse to the point they couldn't be healed, and he was unable to remove his shackles either. He knew that Lopes would be killed at this rate, then he stayed with him until the next time Oren returned with his goons. Oren asked what Heel was doing here standing in front of Lopes. Heel opened his mouth to ask Oren for a favor to stop this and let Lopes go. Oren didn't like that so he took out his glove and slapped Heel with it. Oren didn't like how Heel was begging him to let Lopes go even if he was a royalty. Oren got pissed off and asked Heel to move aside calling him a powerless man, or else he would turn Heel to ashes along with Lopes. Heel knew he couldn't do anything but beg for Lopes' life, so he kept saying please to Oren again and again. Oren felt bored by seeing his pathetic begging, and told Heel to do whatever he wanted. Heel was surprised how Oren changed his mind but next, Oren stated that he got bored from this kind of training and done with the monster. Heel felt happy hearing that, but next Oren asked him to go and undo the shackles on Lopes. He said that Heel was free to do what he wanted, so if he wished to set Lopes free he was free to do so, but he couldn't let a monster roam around the capital, so if he were to see Lopes again then he would dispose of it quickly. Oren gave Heel then seconds to do what he wanted and free the Lopes, but Heel knew that he couldn't do so. Oren started counting backwards from 10 right away, and as the counting kept reducing, Heel tried to do his best and save Lopes by undoing the shackles. He kept using picks on them but it didn't work, 
and soon Lopes realized himself that he was about to die. Lopes smiled at Heel as the counting got over, and in the next second, nothing left of Lopes but ashes. While Heel fell into despair seeing Lopes die in front of him, Oren called him awful for letting his friend die like that, but he actually knew that Heel won't be able to do anything to save Lopes in the first place. He went to try and punch Oren, but couldn't even get close to him because of his shield. Heel was mad at Oren, as he cried grieving over Lopes. Oren then told Heel clearly that someone as weak as him could not even hope to touch someone as strong as him with a threatening look in his eyes. After that, he remembered that he woke up on a bed in a medical building. He somehow managed to get up and go to that place again, where Lopes' remains were still there. The locket in his neck turned out to be the ashes of Lopes which he held dear, and he felt guilty for making a promise he couldn't keep. He told Rihanna this was the real him, to which she responded by assuring him that he was not powerless at all. She reminded him how he worked hard for the Belden tribe, real and Lopes as well, and always gave his best to help others, as she got tears from listening to his story. She apologized to him, since he had been through a lot in the past. He wondered why he told her this story now and understood that he just wanted someone to listen to it. Then Rihanna stopped crying in a few moments, and real came towards them cheerfully. The three of them got up and started walking to cross the trees around them, and he knew that he just wanted to tell Rihanna about his story. Once they crossed the trees, the fields were filled with flowers everywhere which belonged to Rihanna's hometown. Riel was happy to run around the field, and then Rihanna called Heel out and told him that even though he couldn't erase the regrets he felt about Lopes, he shouldn't forget in the hard times from now on that she and everyone else are always there for him. He was not alone anymore with a large family, for which he felt thankful to Rihanna for. After that, he asked Varus to investigate the Yggdrasil tree further, and he found out that its leaves could be used to make salve and tea, but too much of its consumption could put one in a daze, so it was advised to be cautious about it. The branches of the tree were not only light but also strong enough to be used with orichalcum tools. They also tried to make orichalcum ice axes handles from it, and after doing so many tasks, the times passed quickly and it got to the dinner time. He told Full about the dinner time, but she said she was not tired yet. He stated that she could continue the next day, so she agreed and put her pickaxe back. He figured that Yggdrasil branches also had a fatigue reduction effect, and this tree really did grant it all sorts of blessings to everyone. He was looking forward to harvest the new crops, since the flower fields were always blooming beautifully. He was glad to see that their life in the island was getting more rich, and soon Real fell asleep, and he went to his bed as well wondering what he would mind the next day. When he woke up in the morning, he saw Real acting weird and crying. Hearing him, others also came to check why he was crying, and Heel stated that Real might be having a nightmare. Rihanna tried to comfort Real but he was feeling unsettled, then Heel noticed there was some mark in Real's left eye. It turned out to be a crest, and then the area around them suddenly grew completely white. Reel's mark sent signals directly to others' brains, and they saw his memory of the day when Tybris tribe met their end. Many kobolds were lying dead and chopped off aboard, and Alhemina was doing her best to protect everyone else from the beast. But the monster was just too powerful and it easily broke through her barrier, and took out her staff along with her right hand. She tried to use the shield again but her attempt went in vain as the monster charged, and ate her along with half of the ship. Heel was scared to the brink of falling down to his knees just by looking at the monster, as well as Rihanna. Everyone saw the same thing, and they saw just how dangerous the Leviathan was, and it made Heel start sweating in fear. After the image, Varus stated that he knew that the crest in Reel's eyes was called clairvoyance. This crest was said to be the all-seeing eye of God, which meant that everything they just saw was what Reel saw before parting ways with his mother. The power of clairvoyance affected the whole island, and everyone saw the terrifying power of Leviathan. The residents were worried if Leviathan would attack their island, and if it did then what they could do against it. They were worried, and so Heel as well. He wasn't sure what he would do if Leviathan were to come here either, and if he could really protect all these people. Elvin shouted out loud to tell everyone stop making sour faces and remembered what they have been through up until now. And if they just worked together with Heel, then there was nothing they couldn't do. He kept everyone's faith in Heel, and then he decided to stand up and talk to them. He told them to calm down and start preparing for the possible attack of the island. Even if it was not a certainty, they couldn't be careless to ignore a legendary beast. And no matter how strong it was, they would surely stand against it altogether. He requested everyone to lend him their strength, and having said that, he started thinking of his next step. 
he could understand after watching Alhemina's battle against Leviathan that his magic would not work against it. So he asked Mappa if Orichalcum weapons would work. Mappa wasn't sure, and they were all putting their thoughts in it. He tried to think hard for a way through it. So he first came up with the idea to go to the deep place inside the cave where he found the golem. He had the idea of using it as a refuge and they could just construct a freezer right next to it for supplies. But Elvin stated that it might collapse if the beast tackled the island, and suggested retreating. Heel stated he had an idea for that as well, and he started shaping a place especially for a different purpose. After that, he wanted to dig new materials and discussed it with the others. All this time the island had developed so much thanks to new discoveries underground. He had a doubt that Xiao Reef was still full of mysteries which mean that there is still a possibility of something laying dormant under the caves which could stand up against a creature like Leviathan. He couldn't be sure about that unless he tries, so Varus suggests he take Reel along with him this time. He thought that his clairvoyance might prove to be useful, so he headed out with Reel in his bag. Soon after their search started, Reel fell asleep without doing anything. He thought Reel would wake up soon so he should do some exploring on his own for now. And thus the whole island started working together to come up with various ways to start a defensive plan against the Leviathan. They didn't have to worry about lumber thanks to the Yggdrasil tree. And soon the constructions of the defensive walls were almost completed. Then Reel woke up and started barking, which made him think that Reel might have found something. But it turned out that he just wanted to pee. And during their exploration, Reel stayed moody as he also had the ability to see through the bedrock thanks to his clairvoyance. Heel found his skills reliable because Reel found him large amounts of ores which even he couldn't find. After a few weeks, Reel started acting more energetic than before pointing out at a spot. High and Full were confused and thought that Reel wanted to dig there, but the problem they had doing so was that there was no optimization light on the spot. He wondered if it would be alright like that, but he believed Reel must have found something for sure. He knew if he striked there carefully it would be okay, but the moment he hit the ground he fell down a hidden cave which was right beneath that spot. And there, he found a huge armor laying down with a sword five times his own body size. He realized that the thing in the armor was a golem, and it didn't have a heart stone yet. The armor looked like it was made out of orichalcum but the sword seemed to be made of something even stronger. He wanted to try getting a closer look at the material of the sword, so he hit it with his pickaxe, and the sound generated from the hit resonated throughout the entire cave, reaching Mappa's ears. Heel realized he couldn't just break the sword as it is because its metal was stronger than even Orichalcum. Then suddenly, Mappa appeared behind him like a ghost. He didn't notice when he got here. When Mappa saw the sword his eyes were amazed to see it, and he was so happy that he started worshipping it. Full and Heel wondered what was going on, and why Mappa was more excited than usual. Mappa then took the heavy sword back to the surface by himself to take it for processing. Mappa then worked on the sword along with the help of other smiths, but he seemed to have a problem with something. The other smiths informed Heel there wasn't enough heating power to melt the sword. Then Rihanna arrived and she saw the sword. Heel asked her to help him in melting the sword by combining his magic energy with the power of the furnace. They used flame magic, and the furnace power increased by many times, followed by putting the sword into it right away. After the melting was successful, the melted material came out, and after the process of turning it into a raw material was done, he picked a bit of it to check. It turned out to be mithril, which was believed to be the hardest metal lost by the gods, and it was capable of killing even the gods, along with its ability to be imbued with magic. Heel was glad to have achieved it and thanked Reel for helping him find it. Now for the next part, he believed Mappa to be able to use the mithril to create the greatest weapon soon. And finally, their defensive wall was complete, and the reclaimed land now looked more like a fortress which was good since they were going up against a legendary beast. They continued to come up with other plans to defeat it as well, and it was the start of Xiao's first greatest battle. Later in the night, he noticed Elvin was with Reel, then Rihanna quietly came behind him and signaled to stay quiet watching what happened next. While Reel bowed down and apologized to Reel for what he said about his mother earlier, he acknowledged that she was indeed a great warrior, and asked him to keep watching as they would avenge his mother together. Heel and Rihanna overheard him, then Reel nicely put his hand in his eyes which made Scream a little in pain. Now that things were turning out good internally, all that's left was to trust the strength of Xiao if Leviathan were to appear. After some time, the watchman rang the bells of alert, and Heel rushed to check what it was. Elvin told him that two ships were seen on the ocean, and Varus gave him a telescope to see for himself. When he looked into the telescope, he saw the emblem of the same orcs tribe who attacked the Belden tribe before. It turned out they were the survivors of an orcs tribe, and Elvin was furious thinking if they were coming to attack the island they wouldn't let them have it. 
The, suddenly, something humongous showed up in the ocean at some distance from the ships. The ships started attacking it, and Heel noticed that ships were actually trying to run away from something. Reel started barking, and Heel understood something was very wrong here. He sensed an incredible amount of magic energy coming from the sea right now, and what they saw next left everyone's jaw open in fear. It was the legendary beast Leviathan, emerging from the sea with its huge black shadow which seemed to reach the heavens, meaning it was very big, as well as had a terrifying roar which drove the seas around it insane. The orc on the ship were doing their best to face the Leviathan, but their bullets had no effect on it, and at this point it seemed almost impossible to defeat this fierce beast. Heel wanted to save the remaining ship and Elvin quickly rang the bell to catch everyone's attention. He instructed everyone not to just stand there and prepare for the upcoming battle, by taking the positions as they have been practicing for the past week. Heel was concerned if it was heavy for Elvin to save the orcs who were their enemy. Elvin stated that he was not doing this to save those orcs but instead he just thought that it would be best to attack the Leviathan while it was distracted by the ship. Heel understood then instructed Full to give the orders to everyone to evacuate towards the cave as planned. Full obeyed him and told everyone who was going to fight to not die no matter what. Heel was confident in his team, and with smiles, they started the war against the beast Leviathan. Varus followed by giving instructions for preparing the heavyweight ballista and bringing out its arrow. Goblins worked together to get the weapon ballista ready, and the arrow on it was made of the mithril. Mappa had put his very soul into making it, and this arrow was strong enough to penetrate through anything. They aimed at Leviathan with the arrow, and when Leviathan got closer to the ship, they saw it was the right time and fired the arrow. The arrow went at a very high speed, but when it was almost about to hit the Leviathan, the beast dodged the arrow easily. Heel knew that even if the cannonballs didn't make a dent on it, the mithril arrow was sure to take it down which was why Leviathan dodged it. Although, since the arrow caught its attention, Leviathan now made Sheol as its primary target. Seeing the danger coming, Heel instructed everybody to load the next arrow, while he would hold the Leviathan with golems, and asked Rihanna to prepare for their next strategy as well. He called out the golem number 10 and 11 with ice magic, and 12 and 13 with wind, and together, they formed a combo attack of Mega Blizzard to hit the Leviathan. But Leviathan didn't budge or stopped, and kept coming at the same speed. They realized that magic would really not work, but they had another alternative, which was to freeze the water around it. Heel thought it would be fine if they do so, and make it unable to move, but to his surprise, the Leviathan broke all the ice and it started charging a hyperbeam. Heel knew it was getting bad, so he immediately called out Golem number 6 and 7 with shields to put shields at a particular angle to divert the attack instead of taking it head on, as Leviathan charged and shot the immensely powerful beam. When it reached the defensive wall, the beam hit the shields held by the golems along with the shield magic. They had to give it their everything just to stand in with the shield. It released powerful waves causing the whole area to shake. Then the shield started to tear up little bits from the edges. As the damage only kept increasing, they put all of their strength and barely managed to deflect the attack in another direction, which caused a huge explosion in the sea. They were hardly alright, and Leviathan already started approaching them again. Brianna informed Elvin that the heavyweight ballista was ready again, and Elvin was prepared for using it. Heel saw something was off since Leviathan was continuing to charge at them, meaning it was confident enough that it could dodge the arrow even at this short distance. They fired the arrow but this time, they used another strategy, which made Leviathan to not notice the arrow. Everybody was waiting for the outcome, then the arrow successfully hit the Leviathan and it actually managed to penetrate through its body. The Leviathan didn't notice the arrow because Rihanna had casted a hiding spell on it, which made it an invisible arrow. Everyone was excited to successfully hit the beast, and Elvin told them to calm down since they managed to do it once only for now. After that, the arrow was tied to a strong rope made by combining spider silk and steel wires. Heel instructed everyone to keep at it and don't let the Leviathan run away. He counted 1 to 5 as the beast got pulled closer, and when it reached the designated area, many golems hidden in the sea launched their hands connected with the strong metal wires, and bound the beast from all directions. Leviathan resisted a lot, and it even started breaking the gears which couldn't hold out for long. They informed Heel to act immediately, and they prepared another arrow in the heavyweight ballista, this time aiming for its head to finish it. Now since the Leviathan was in danger, many things emerged from within its scales and spread everywhere around the area including the golems. Heel was shocked to see that there were many small sea stalkers, which were parasitic monsters that latch onto giant sea creatures. It turned out that they had been hiding under the scales of Leviathan all this time and held a great threat on their own as well. 
the parasites managed to break the hands of the golem number one, and before they did more damage, Heel instructed others to shoot down the sea stalkers immediately. Apparently, there were too many, and even started to cling to the defensive wall as well. They tried their best not to let them climb the wall, while Leviathan was putting up resistance at the same time, which caused more of the golems to fall as well. Heel didn't expect this to happen, and then unexpectedly, the horns on Leviathan's back grew larger and more terrifying. They could guess it was something even more dangerous than the ray attack earlier, and just like they expected, the horns depart from its body, and they spread everywhere, falling down like a rain of powerful arrows. Heel immediately casted another shield and asked everybody to get behind him. The horns fell everywhere holding enough firepower in each of them to destroy the whole wall on their own. They hardly managed to make it out alive from the horn's attack thanks to the shield but in the next second, they thought it was over. But things weren't like they thought as the leviathan's tail was very close right in front of them. It was so sudden they didn't even have the time to process what was happening. As the huge tail of the beast landed on the area destroying each and everything which came in its way. The sounds from the impact of leviathan's tail attack reached even to the deeper parts of the cave where the residents were evacuated to. They were scared from the sounds and hoped it would all be over soon. The kids were scared thinking if they were going to lose their home again, to which their mothers replied not to worry since their master heel would surely make things right again. Whereas, the tail attack of Leviathan destroyed a large area as if it never existed, and fortunately heel was just sent back flying from the impact. He was caught by shell just in time and landed safely. He got up again and remembered how the golem number 6 and 7 protected him before and he was alive thanks to them. He called out to the others, but there was just dust everywhere which made him think that they might be in trouble since he couldn't hear anyone back. While the small sea stalkers climbed the wall also, and spread around heel leaving him less options. He knew it would be bad if sea stalkers were to make their way into the island, so he kept them back with thunder attacks. He noticed that his magic power was at the verge of depletion and his attacks got weaker than before. He was getting pushed into a corner, then he told Shell to make a run for it. Then Rihanna arrived, and she used her weapon to kill dozens of the sea stalkers around them in an instant. Heel felt reassured seeing Rihanna was alright, and she claimed that she won't let anything lay a finger on her master heel. He expressed his happiness at her being okay, and so was Rihanna to see him alright as well. After that, a rain of arrows started coming from behind them and they hit the sea stalkers. Heel turned to look back and saw that the arrows came from the others who wanted to protect Heel. He was glad to see they were alright as well, along with other goblins and golems. They all ambushed the sea stalkers at once with their duty to follow the princess Rihanna's lead, and kill as many sea stalkers as they could. Elvin said sorry to heal for being late, but he was just glad to see they were alright. The leviathan was going on another rampage again, and even large golems were no match for even one of its attacks. The beast still stood tall, and realizing the danger they were in, Heel instructed everyone that they would now commence to their last strategy. Rihanna told him it was too dangerous but Heel knew that he must do it despite the odds since that strategy had more chances against the Leviathan as it was so close to the shore now. Rihanna was worried about him and she held his hand and gave him all the magic energy she had left to make sure he managed to defeat the Leviathan. Heel took the responsibility to take some action on his own now so when the beast was going to attack again. He hit his mouth before it could charge the magic attack properly. Heel got Leviathan's attention intentionally and got it to chase him. Leviathan got enraged and it started chasing Heel for real regardless of what was in its way including land. Heel was on Terran now and he asked Terran to run as fast as she could to the place of plant. Now he was in a spot where nobody could help him but just believe him to deal with the latter. Elvin looked around and figured that there was still something he could do to help. He went to the heavyweight ballista and started pulling its rope. Thoris warned him that the winch of the ballista was destroyed so they couldn't pull back the rope anymore. But Elvin wanted to do something for Heel as he was risking his life for them, and Elvin's pride as a great warrior won't allow him to just sit back and watch in this situation. He tried to pull the rope with all his strength and Mappa joined him as well, while Leviathan wrapped his whole body around the area of Heel to trap him. Then some cannon fires came attacking on the Leviathan and these were shot by the orc's ship from before. After that, a mithril arrow came and hit one of Leviathan's eyes. It was shot by Elvin and Mappa working together, and now Heel moved on ahead as the path ahead of him opened up. He managed to finally arrive at the spot he planned a trap on, so he raised his hand as planned, which was a signal to Reel who could watch it with his clairvoyance and signal full ahead. She hit the rock ahead of her which seemed to be part of their plan and it created a chain effect on the cave leading to the fall of Leviathan under the cave. It was a large enough pitfall to even fit a Leviathan. 
Heel had planned to prepare this in case the ballista was not enough to deal with the beast, and dug this place right below the reclaimed land. He also destroyed the supporting pillars, and it was all done to bring Leviathan down here. Now the final part of the plan was for him to deal with it head on. He took out a pickaxe made of mithril, and he spread hundreds of rocks and stones around everywhere. The crest asked him if he wanted to mine, and it turned out that he wanted to rely on his boosted power while mining to kill the Leviathan. The monster launched another ray of magic, and Heel dodged it. After that, he jumped straight towards the Leviathan to use his power of the Cave King to smash it. The crest understood his instructions and he swung the pickaxe with the full power of the cave king inside it, which turned the mithril pickaxe into the ultimate god killer metal. His crest started to glow even brighter, and in the next second everyone above the surface saw the light coming out of the ground, which was apparently produced by the impact of Heel's pickaxe attack directly on the legendary beast Leviathan's head, and crushing it apart. His attack landed a critical hit on the beast, and its impact resonated throughout the entire body of Leviathan. It was strong enough to completely crack the whole Leviathan's body, and this is how the legendary beast of the legends was defeated by the hands of the Cave King Heel. After that he grabbed the rope to go back to the surface, but then the Leviathan released a dying scream which roared loudly throughout the cave. They reached even the surface, affected the rocks around them, and the other's grip on the rope slipped causing him to fall down. Blood came out from his mouth because of tolerating all the noise, then Terran caught his rope again and saved him. Terran pulled him up quickly since the cave was about to collapse then Rihanna came and jumped down to rescue Heel. She got another thread from Terran and caught Heel in the air. She told him to hang on until they make it out alive safely. Then Heel told her that she won't make it out if she were to hold him now. She declined and told him to not give up, promising him that they would make it out alive. Then more rocks started falling from above them. Then suddenly a huge shadow of a beast appeared right in front of them. She was startled by it but apparently the beast held them and made its way out of the cave carrying both of them. They wondered who it was and why it was saving them, then a large boulder appeared in their way. The beast told them not to worry and it broke through the boulder instantly. They successfully managed to make it out of the cave alive, and Heel asked him who he was. The beasts were amazed to see that humans managed to defeat Leviathan, and it turned out the beasts were the kobolds who seemed to be looking out for their highness. They sensed his smell and asked him if there was a baby kobold washed up on this island inside a box. Elvin came running to see if Heel was okay, then he noticed the kobolds and it seemed that he knew them. They also knew Elvin and Varus by their previous names, being aware of their tribe being chased out of the land. The kobold names were Ash and Hein who were the two guards tasked with guarding Reel. They understood the fact Varus knew about them being the two guards meant that they surely heard Alhemina's message, so the baby must be here. Then Reel came running towards Heel while Ash and Hein were happy to see Reel was alright. As Reel came to Heel, both Ash and Hein got down on their knees expressing their happiness on seeing Reel was okay. And they were also sorry for not being able to protect Reel which they believed was the greatest failure of their lives. Heel was glad to see that and Reel couldn't understand since he was still too little to know anything. Elvin asked Ash how they managed to get to this island. Ash told him about how things turned out, as they were about to sink in the sea after being adrift for two days, and they were rescued by the orc pirate named Camu of the Corvus tribe. Then a boat started approaching the island, and Elvin asked Ash if he wasn't at the war. Ash stated he should meet with Camu, and currently their ship was damaged, making it hard to sail again. The last bombardment also depleted their ammunition and told Elvin that he could easily have his revenge, including their own lives in his hands. The boat arrived with two orcs on the island. They weren't sure what to say, then Heel spoke up and introduced himself as the Lord of Shial Reef. The other orc introduced himself as Camu, the leader of Corvus tribe, and after seeing how surprising their previous battle was, it came out more of the surprise for him to see that this island full of monsters was actually ruled by a human. Camu was thrice in size to that of Heel which was huge even for an orc. Camu also recognized Elf, to which Elvin told him that his name had been changed now. He made it clear that since they ended up saving them, he still hadn't forgotten that they were the ones to destroy their hometown. He wondered how they would get even with orcs now, and Camu responded by saying that it must be fate that they met. Camu then put his sword down and kneeled down offering his own life, as felt responsible for the actions of the Corvus tribe. He requested for his tribe to be spared in return for his head. Elvin could understand that Camu made up his mind. Then the orc behind Camu spoke up, stating it wasn't actually Camu's fault but of the traitor. Camu silenced him saying that they must not shame themselves even more and let him die like this. Heel heard him. Then Elvin shouted to everyone to be quiet and listen to Heel. Heel spoke up to Camu saying regardless of what he decided, 
He wanted to know what actually happened so he let the other orc speak. He then informed him that they used to have an orc named Claude, who was the second in command and a traitor. Claude waited until their boss Camu was out on expedition to target their main base and steal part of the fleet. It happened because Claude was not satisfied with the soft-hearted methods of his boss and got some orcs to his side saying that they deserve more power and fame with the fortune. It was painful to witness there were many who sided with Claude, and as soon as Camu heard about it, he immediately rushed to take the fleet back but it was too late since Claude started running wild. Heel understood that Claude was the one to attack the Belden tribe, and while they were in battle with Claude, it was the time when Leviathan appeared in the middle of it. Heel realized that the orcs with half-bodies and corpses which washed up to his island before were the part of Claude's faction. Camus then stated that the fracturing of his tribe was his failure, and he felt guilty for having the flag sullied which he inherited from his ancestors. Heel felt sorry for Camus. Then Elvin stated that he should have kept his people together, and if he did then Belden tribe's home wouldn't have been attacked. Elvin took out his sword asking him I to take responsibility, and Camu accepted it keeping his words while feeling it would be fine to be put down by Elvin. Heel tried to stop Elvin but to everyone's surprise, he swung his sword but he didn't kill Camu. He asked Camu to take his sword and challenged him to a duel as the leader of the Corvus tribe. They agreed to the duel and everyone watched how it would turn out from the sidelines. Teal was concerned about Elvin since his opponent was the leader of the orcs, so he thought that he should use a shield at least. But Rihanna stopped him from doing anything to interfere with the match, so he just watched it with focus. Camu told Elvin that he was ready to offer his life to the Belden tribe, but now that they were in a duel, he swore that he wouldn't go easy on him. Elvin liked that and didn't have any wish to hold back either being confident about himself. The goblins, Heel, Rihanna and everyone else had their eyes on the duel as it was about to begin. Elvin had an axe with a pulling rope attached to it, and Camu was using his sword for the fight. The duel began and both of them didn't spare any second to make a move and attacked each other right away. Camu easily dodged Elvin's axe and made the first hit on his left shoulder, followed by another powerful swing which caused Elvin to lose his axe. Heel was surprised to see how fast they were happening. Then Elvin picked his weapon again for another bout. Camu stated that nobody had ever been able to evade his sword this much, as he kept attacking and made small cuts in different body parts of Elvin. Camu was really incredibly skilled, and Full was worried about her father. Then Elvin started making a comeback increasing his attack speed again, and reached out his weapon behind Camu this time. Camu noticed his attempt to attack from the back, and he already had a way to counter it by deflecting the axe in midair by a small degree with his sword, and sending it backwards at the Elvin himself. Elvin now had two attacks incoming from both his own axe and Camu's sword. Then he made an unexpected move which left the spectators shocked. He let Camus' sword pass through his hand intentionally to make him unable to use any of his sword techniques now. After that, he planned to break it but the battle turned into a pure fight between raw strengths. Camus warned Elvin not to be fooled by his appearance since he was still an orc, and usually the orcs were far stronger than goblins in grapple. He started overwhelming Elvin as the battle grew intense for both of them. Elvin then made a reply that he didn't care what Camu said since he would make a joke of his strength, as he had faith in himself that even though orcs were stronger than a regular goblin, Elvin himself was the great warrior of the Belden tribe, and his warrior crest activated increasing his physical strength, so much that he managed to lift Camu upwards despite his heavy weight and bigger body size than his own, while Camu was left shocked. He couldn't believe that he was lifted by a goblin. Then Elvin smashed Camu's body to the ground causing him to bleed from his mouth, and he managed to break his sword with his bare hands, marking the end of the duel. The goblins were proud of their leader Elvin, and immediately came to check if they were okay. Elvin stated an orc had a hard head so Camu would be alright, and soon Camu woke up and admitted that he lost. He asked Elvin to finish it now, to which Elvin unexpectedly replied that from now on, Camu's life was his and he wouldn't let him throw it away just like that. Camu was left shocked by that. Then Elvin went ahead and announced himself as the winner of the duel in front of everyone else. He claimed to have defeated the Corvus tribe which made goblins happy. Then he went and apologized to Heel for jumping forward and showing off like that. Heel was okay since he knew what Elvin was like and thanked him. Heel told Camu that he could stay on the island for a while and have his ship repaired. He granted him to gather his tribe together and Camu accepted that he would surely do that and make sure not to cause any troubles. Then Elvin noticed Full came to him and she kicked him right away, which made him scream in pain. He asked what she was doing, and she just came closer and leaned her head forward in him. 
She was very worried about Elvin and reminded him that she asked him to not overdo himself like that again. Now that the things were settled, Camu stated that the orcs would be under his care for now and asked other orcs to greet him. With this, over a hundred members of the Corvus tribe became his guests, and this intensity of the whole day left him worried and exhausted. Whereas, Ash and Hein wanted to follow the queen's orders and now serve the foster parents of Real. They saw that the Belden tribe received his title, so they also wanted to be named by him just like them. Heel agreed but reminded them that he only granted Tame to grant others the effect of his crest and it wasn't like an indication of his underling or subordinate. He named Ash to Ashton and Hein to Hainus and asked them to protect their comrades from now on. Heel figured that things would surely become busy from now on, and Varus stated that he would prepare new living spaces for others. Then suddenly, Heel felt a painful headache which happened because he was still tired from before, and apparently he also had a fever. Brianna stated that she would take him to his room and Varus agreed that he would handle the other things. Heel told her it wasn't that big of a deal, but she reminded him that he must have been extremely exhausted, so she didn't listen to him and carried him in his lap, which was indeed very embarrassing for him. Camu and Hainus could see it was kind of awkward, but she was too dense to understand what they meant, and set out on her way to Heel's room. Heel understood she was somewhat right about him needing to rest, and left everything else to Varus to focus on his recovery. After that, Varus started thinking of what to do with the huge corpse of Leviathan, then Mappa went ahead and ate some of it. Mappa then started dancing in joy, indicating that the meat was very delicious. Varus then called out Golem number 10 and 11 and asked them to turn the cave under the reclaimed land into a freezer, and unexpectedly, the Leviathan became food to them. He knew that he would also need to pull out the golems which were damaged in the sea. Then orcs came and asked if Varus would let them help in this matter since they had boats with experience over waters. Varus agreed and gave them ropes to tie the golems with, while Heel wished that he could make it possible for the orcs and goblins to get along despite their relationship in the past even if it takes time. The heart stones of the golems managed to survive thanks to Orichalcum's shield, so he figured they could just rebuild the golems again and use them. But before all of this, Heel knew he needed to be able to move, and Rihanna was by his side preparing food for him and keeping his care along with managing other things he might need help with. She told him he needed to eat better and spoon-fed him by hand. He liked being fed like this, and he actually started to feel better thanks to her. Aside from that, the medicine Varus made from Yggdrasil started showing its effect to help him recover quickly, and he asked Rihanna not to trouble herself since he would recover soon enough. Brianna said it would not be a problem for him, and assured him that it was nice to rest like this once in a while. She liked taking care of him, and he liked her concerns and kindness, but he didn't want to rest for long while others were working. He wanted to get back to mining soon, meanwhile somewhere under the caves. Some goblins who were mining noticed the area around them was warmer than other areas. And while they kept mining, they were met with an unexpected tragedy and saw the water coming out from the spot he just dug up. But what they thought was a tragedy turned out to be a blessing since it was a hot spring. Next day, Heel recalled his journey up to now of how he sailed to an island on an abandoned reef, rescued a wrecked ship and defeated a legendary beast. And even after overcoming his share of hardships, he found himself in a situation which was the greatest one he ever faced. It was him sharing the same hot spring with Rihanna, and she felt it was nice while he was uncomfortable in it. This situation happened to start a week ago, on the day when the hot spring was discovered. While in recovery, he tried to get up and use his pickaxe but he couldn't even swing it due to pain in his body. Then Rihanna came and saw him screaming in pain caused by him moving when he wasn't supposed to. She reminded him again to take it easy and he apologized to him again as well. Camu teased him by calling him a sinful man to keep his girl worried like this. Heel was surprised to see others were here as well, then Camu stated that he just happened to be passing hereby, because Rihanna was giving him the tour of the island. Then Rihanna gave Heel his clothes which were tattered from the previous fight, and she got them fixed with spider silk, making them stronger than before. He thanked Rina for it, and Ashton mentioned that he realized that this island was still full of surprises. From his point of view, it first looked like a small reef but it had vast underground tunnels, sophisticated smithing equipment, and even Camu who had been to many lands had never seen a Yggdrasil before. Heel was glad to hear them, and he wanted to continue making this island a better place to live, so he told them to feel free if they saw anything which caught their eye. Camu agreed to him and told Heel that they would do their best to be accepted as fellow islanders soon. There was still hesitation inside the goblins regarding how to direct the orcs, and Camu knew that things like this take time. Heel assured him it would be okay since they already get along with humans like him, so it wouldn't take them long to understand them either one day. 
Camus was glad for his kindness and asked Heel how he managed to create such a dominion by being kind to the monsters. Heel replied it was a long story and told him that he was originally from Sandfails and the Xiao Reef was a part of it. The name Sandfails caught Camus' attention, then Full arrived telling him that they had some trouble. He asked her what it was and she informed him about the sudden burst of hot water underground. He went there along with everyone else to see for himself, and Varus there asked him how he was feeling health-wise. Heel told him he was feeling good enough to walk around, and continued to mention that a hot spring was indeed an incredible discovery for them. Elvin also expressed his happiness at having a hot spring since he loved it, whereas Full remained calm-headed and asked him what they would do if the cave got flooded with the hot spring. The goblins who minded informed him how it happened, and now the water wasn't stopping. Heel asked Full if she had any advice for solving problems like this to which she was not sure enough as she never faced it before in the minds of her hometown. Heel gave it a thought, putting his first priority now to check if this hot spring water was safe. Suddenly, Mappa jumped out of nowhere and started enjoying the hot spring alone. Elvin was mad since he wanted to go first, and Varus assured Heel that the water seemed good since Mappa had no problems. Not only that, but he offered to examine it later on as well. Heel was glad for their help. Then he went to Mappa to ask if he knew any way to carry this water to the outside. Varus stated it would surely be hard since normally people used to use the water flow from the top of the mountain to bottom. But here it was different since the hot spring was deep within the cave. Then Mappa got an idea while relaxing, and he immediately ran all the way to the blacksmith. He drew his plan with some new designs he came up with and showed them to Heel. Heel understood that he wanted to use the workshop to make molds out of stone and then use iron ores to create some supplies. They immediately started the work, and Heel took out the ores from his inventory. Camus was amazed to see how he did it, and witnessed the whole process of people being busy making many iron pipes from the molds. After that, Mappa modified the golem number 8 and 9, and now they could produce a line of fire magic from their arms which could be used to connect the pipes by melting them at the edges together. This was the start of a big project to take the hot water to the surface, and Mappa invented some new devices which would be gushing the water out of the cave. He didn't want to waste the water by just throwing it out, so he instructed Camus and others to keep taking care of making a large public bath on the surface. He wanted to help in the project a little as well, but Rihanna didn't let him, so he had no choice but to let everyone else do the work. And after a week, the construction and everything was done. Now what was left was to take out the hot water to the surface. He liked how the huge bathhouse turned out to be, and Camus wondered if water would really come up here, as he hadn't witnessed the works and machines like these working before. After that, Mappa finalized the machines and the underground device was being operated via Golem No. 10's wind magic. And on the surface, Mappa activated the machine and the mechanism started working slowly, as everyone was eager to see the water coming from the statue linked with the pipes and machines. It didn't seem to function at first, then Mappa hit it hard with his hand and the machine started releasing the hot water from its statue's mouth. Heel was glad to see how it was turning out, and Full and Elvin were excited to quickly go to the hot spring. Camus then politely told Elvin that he could be the first one to bath, and they could take their time. But before he could finish his sentence, he was sent flying into the bath as Elvin kicked him. Camus was startled by the sudden fall, and Elvin ignored him and told the others to get ready for the bath. He asked them to wash themselves first instead of jumping in like the orc Camus, but the reality was that he was kicked. After that, all the goblins and orcs bathed together feeling relieved from the hot spring, which washed away their exhaustion. Elvin teased Camus saying he was weak if he was tired from just this much work. Camus got offended hearing something about his beautiful body, then another orc informed Elvin if he talked to Camus about his body, he would start showing them off because he was very proud of his beautiful body. While Astan and Hainus were keeping care of Reel, it turned out that Reel had been a princess instead of a prince all this time. Heel arrived and he was happy to see that everyone was having a great time. Then he heard Elvin telling Full not to swim in the hot springs, which caused Heel to pay attention to another important matter. Apparently, he had forgotten to separate the baths for males and females, but he realized that nobody here was conscious about that, since both genders were just enjoying the hot bath as if it was normal. He was startled to see the females naked, and asked Varus why he didn't keep them separated. Then another thing for him to notice was to witness that one more person would be around here, which was Rihanna and she was enjoying the bath walking around normally. She came and offered to wash his back, and at that time his inner thoughts started going wild making it hard for him to decide if he should use this to his advantage, or to just accept their ways. But he felt too shy to just let things be, 
and ran from there making excuses that he was feeling dizzy. She was confused about what happened to him suddenly, whereas he went inside the cave with a shell who followed him, even though he could have gone to bathe with others. He confessed to Shell that he wanted to go with others, but he would have felt like he was tricking them because even if they weren't conscious of things like that, he was. He went to the place where the hot spring originated from and found some fresh hot water there. He got into the bath and enjoyed it feeling relieved of his stress and exhaustion. He looked at the machines and believed that Mappa was surely a genius. Then Rihanna arrived there and saw him taking the bath alone. He asked her why she was here, to which she stated that she couldn't leave him alone. She thought that Heel wanted to enjoy bathing somewhere quietly without noise around, and she asked him if she could also join him. And this was how he fell into the situation, one of the greatest dangers he might have faced according to him. He was extremely nervous and felt like his dignity and pride was at stake, whereas Rena was normal about it and asked him to take a look at the shiny rock in front of them which looked like a star. He tried to calm himself down by focusing on looking through his inventory. Then Rihanna said that she had something important to talk to him about. It made him go crazy on the inside, as he wondered what she wanted to say when they were alone. She then spoke up and told him that she hadn't been able to sort out the feelings between the Belden tribe regarding the orcs. She was feeling sorry for that, and even if she knew Camu wasn't at fault, goblins were just scared since they have their homes destroyed which would stay as a fear in the corner of their heart. Even so, she was glad that the Belden and Corvus tribes were working together, eating together, and enjoying hot springs together which made her really happy. He told her that she should not apologize for that, since he knew firsthand how difficult it could be to break free from one's past. He asked her to take a look at their island which had goblins, slimes, cave spiders, golems, kobolds, a naked old man, and even a human, and surprisingly they had all been getting along well. She felt relieved to hear that, and leaned on his back and dozed off without even realizing it. He was caught off guard from it, and felt extremely nervous to the point he wanted to run. Then he remembered how much Rihanna had been working since the battle against the Leviathan, despite her energy being exhausted at that day just like him. She had been working hard for him to recover, and also helping others non-stop, for which he was very grateful towards her. He thanked her from the bottom of his heart, and just stayed there making sure not to wake her up. Once she woke up, she apologized for dozing off like that, and he was feeling dizzy since he had been here from too long, which caused his blood to rush to his head. After that, he was glad to have bathed in the hot spring, as he noticed that he was finally back to his old self, making a complete recovery. He was so glad to be able to mine again that he cried a little about it, and Full and Rihanna were happy for him. Then Camus came to him to congratulate in making a complete recovery, and he asked him if he had a moment to talk with him. They went to the open area with fresh air, and Camu gave Heel a scroll, calling it a surprise gift to celebrate his recovery. When Heel opened it, he realized it was the diagram of a harbor. He asked him if he was the one to make it, to which he told him that Varus asked him to make it, as they figured that the reclaimed land could be used as a base for the harbor. Camu also mentioned that he heard Heel wanted to trade with the outside world someday but had to take Belden's ships apart due to lack of lumber. Camu told him that he could use the Corvus ship after they finished repairing the damage done by Leviathan on its bottom. Aside from that, they needed a proper harbor and dock as well. He got carried away with the designs and made them a bit more exceptional. He'll noticed it could be even better than the kingdom's facilities, which brought Camu's attention to the fact that Heel was from Sandfails. Heel stated he was the 17th prince of Sandfails, but he was a failure, so got kicked out of the country. And ever since he talked about his past to Rihanna, he had been getting more comfortable talking about it. Camu felt sorry for him. Then Heel told him that he was now living on this island and humans didn't come here, so he wanted to improve it. He decided to talk to Varus and Mappa about the construction plans, but Camu didn't seem to approve of his own plans yet. But after watching Heel's construction methods and fast working of building walls along with filling the land inside them he was surprised. Elvin told him that his boss could do a lot, which showed just how amazing the King of Cave Crest really was. He figured that they would build a perfect harbor this way. Heel then told him that he could only build the foundation, and asked Camu if he could supervise the construction. Varus also agreed to this since Camu was the most suitable person for this task, so Camu happily agreed to create an amazing harbor. Heel then also provided him some golems as helpers. The golems from number 1 to 7 which were destroyed by Leviathan earlier were now finally rebuilt, and ready to put to work. Now that the working parts were all set, what was left now was to mine more stone for the harbor constructions. So he went back to the mines after a long time, and he was happy to be able to mine again. 
Full congratulated him, but she noticed he wasn't using the mithril ice axe. He stated that he still had it but wanted to use a smaller and easier to use ice axe for now. Then they heard Astan and Hainus asking Real to stay back in a safe area, but Real was being troublesome as she wanted to roam around freely. Heel asked them to take care of Real for a while, then Full stated that if Real couldn't help them, then Hainus might need to work instead. Hainus agreed quickly and went to mine, then Full teased him if he was just good with weapons or an ice axe as well. Heel tried to tell Full not to tease him that much, then Astan assured him it was okay and they should instead thank her for keeping an unreserved attitude towards them even if they joined them recently. She told Hainus how to go about mining, then Hainus soon started to pick up and he was indeed strong. Hainus got the hang of mining very quickly to the point he started competing with Full soon enough. Heel was glad to see their minor ranks were growing, and he was pretty much excited himself as well. Then Ashton thought he should get back to work as well, then Real used clairvoyance and indicated towards a particular spot. Whereas Hainus and Full were enjoying mining so many ores, but then Ashton called out Heel informing him about finding something odd. Hainus and Full were surprised to see Ashton was getting ahead of them with the help of Real, then they all went to check out the spot together. They discovered a mysterious box which seemed like it was made of orichalcum. Full wondered if it was the coffin accord to its size, and Ashton didn't found her reasoning good enough. Then he found a stone as well, and Heel took it to check with his ore guide. The new stone turned out to be a transport stone which make it possible to move instantly between transport stones and the distance of transportation depended on its size. He learned that if there was one of the same stones somewhere else, then they would be able to move there. Full then pointed out a hollow spot which looked similar in shape just like the stone Heel had in his hands right now. Heel then tried to put it inside the hole and it fitted perfectly. The hollow box started to glow and surprised everyone. It turned out to be the teleporter which could be used to teleport using the stone as its source, and it was now activated. Full wondered if they could go somewhere from it, and Ashton was concerned where it would take them. They started discussing what they should do, if they should try sending a golem or something else. They didn't want to try it thoughtlessly, while Mappa went straight to the device and got teleported. When others noticed that Mappa had disappeared from the device, they were shocked. Heel decided to go after Mappa and told everyone to wait here, but Ashton stopped him and volunteered to go himself. Then Real used clairvoyance to show everyone where Mappa was, and after seeing it, they were excited to go there quickly. Heel was sure that he could go there now as it didn't seem to be dangerous, and asked Shell to call Varus here as well. Then Real instantly entered the teleporter, followed by Full, and then Ashton and Hainus. The device got stacked with all of them leaving no room inside at all. Heil mentioned that they didn't need to go at once, but nobody was willing to get out of it, and they were stuck as well. Then all of them got teleported at once, and in the next second, they were thrown out of the other teleporter. They reached the other end of the teleportation device, and the place they arrived was tremendously huge, with hundreds of thousands of books everywhere they could see. They couldn't believe in their eyes at all that such a place existed, wondering if they were really still in Xiao. He assured her that they were still on the island since the place looked a lot similar to the other rooms he found with change stones and the golems. The place was really scary as well as it was huge since there didn't seem to be anyone else there except them. Hainus then told Heel that Mappa seemed to be ahead and suggested that they should go right away. Heel agreed and asked him to lead the way, but after he followed Hainus for some time, they arrived at the place only to see that Mappa was lying on the ground with blood around him. Heel rushed to Mappa thinking that he might have been attacked by something but realized that the reason was silly when he saw that Mappa just got a nosebleed from seeing a book with hundreds of inappropriate pictures inside it. Mappa soon got up and he saw a book which had knowledge about the crest of the king of the cave. Heel asked Mappa to hurry, and since Mappa couldn't read, he thought nothing of the book and threw it away to follow after everyone else. Heel returned to the place they came from, and saw that Shell successfully brought everyone else as well. He asked Varus if he saw any good books around here, but Varus could not understand the language written inside them, nor Heel either. Kamu was extremely excited to see that things were looking very adventurous now. He couldn't help but think there must be a treasure as well, after seeing so many strange things like a teleportation device, a giant library, and the signs of an unknown civilization lying dormant in the Xiao Island. He suggested they should explore more around the island, and Heel agreed to it but there were still some parts crumbling here and there, so he advised everybody to be careful of confronting golems. After that, they started to explore the library. He was called out by Full in some time. She told him that she found a book with pictures, and when he looked at them, they saw a very detailed drawing of a huge town. Heel wondered which town it was, and he kind of felt like he had seen buildings like that. Green then pointed out that the mountain in the picture looked very much like the Xiao. 
although its size was very different than Xiao and more lovely than currently. Then he'll notice Shell looking at something being focused. He followed Shell's sight and discovered a large statue of a woman. Rihanna stated the statue looked beautiful just like some goddess, and Heel thought that the statue might be of the one who was probably worshipped by those who lived in Xiao over a long time ago. He was honestly shocked to witness these, because even the kingdom itself did not have any records of ruins like these. He couldn't help but wonder if there would be more ruins waiting to be found here in Xiao. After exploring more around the library, they gathered and reported to retrieve a few heart stones, and magic stones from the remains of the golems. This place was still a mystery for them, so Varus offered to study some books and try to decipher them. Then while they were talking, Full noticed that the sound coming back after being reflected from the wall behind them was odd. She went and hit it lightly to check the wall, finding out that she was right. She called out to Heal and informed him that there was an open space behind the wall, but after looking around the place they didn't find any place to enter it. Full asked if she should just try digging it, then Heal found the right spot to dig and informed Full about it. Full hit the spot carefully with the ice axe and her intuition turned out to be correct. She went to check what was inside, and Heal followed after her to check as well. Surprisingly, he then congratulated Full since this hidden place had the change stones, and fortunately three of them at once. Full remembered in the past how she used to always wake up earlier than everyone else, and first thing she did was to head straight to the cave to mine, along with the golem number 15. She was more fired up about mining than everyone else, and she was even the last one to leave the tunnels. Heal used to be concerned a bit seeing how much she was absorbed in mining, but it couldn't be helped since there was something she wanted no matter what, which was the change stone. After that, everybody got back to the surface and discussed it with each other. For some, it was their first time hearing about the change stone, so Rihanna confirmed to them about it being the truth because she was here evolved through that stone. They couldn't believe that Rihanna used to be a regular goblin, and Camus didn't know before that Rihanna was actually the Belden princess. Camus stated that he had been thinking all this time that Rihanna must have been an elf princess that eloped with Heel, since her ears seemed to be like that of an elf. Heel and Rihanna were startled hearing that and spilled out their drinks and shouted what he was saying. Camus teased them further saying it was odd for them to still be reacting like that. Heel then continued with the topic of changing stones, since he didn't expect them to find three of them suddenly. One of them was reserved for Full since she was the one who found them, and looking for them for a long time as well. He then told Varus that he could use one as well, but Varus wasn't sure thinking there could be someone more suitable for using it. Heel told him that he was sure and thought about it before, because it was a waste for them not to put the Sorcerer King crest to use. Camu was amazed to hear that, since the Sorcerer King used to be the greatest sorcery type crest. Aston followed the same saying it would be really incredible if Varus were to be able to use it, and Elvin reminded Varus that he was also in the last years of his life. If he gets a new body, then he will stay healthy for a longer time. Full and Rihanna didn't want anything to happen to Varus, and then Varus stated that he had also been thinking of being able to use his crest. So he agreed and asked Heel to allow him to use one change stone. Once it was decided, they had one change stone left but there didn't seem to be anyone wanting to evolve. Ashton and Hainus were okay with staying as they were since they were able to use their crests, and next Varus asked Kamu if he had a crest as well. Kamu stated he had a crest, and revealed it was the Sea Dragon Crest, which was powerful enough with the ability to control the water. But apparently, only aquatic monsters could use the crest, which meant that Kamu couldn't use his crest at all. However, Kamu made it clear that he didn't want to evolve to be able to use it. Elvin told him that he could be more powerful with that crest and for a sailor, it would be handy as well. Kamu said it meant nothing since he didn't like how aquatic monsters mostly had slimy scales which he didn't believe to be better than his current beautiful body. So he refused, and they couldn't force him either, coming up with the conclusion to save the change stone for later on. After that, they decided to use the change stones right away and Full decided to go first. She asked Rihanna what she was supposed to do, then she told her that she just needed to picture what she wanted to become, and wished strongly for it to be the change stone. Full closed her eyes and started picturing what she wanted to become. She thought of how weak she was, and always got protected by someone, which made her feel a bit left off to be staying behind them. But it ended today since she would now evolve, and become stronger befitting her title being the daughter of the great warrior Elvin. Others were surprised to see an evolution for the first time, and Heel closed Mappa's eyes, asking Rihanna next to do her part. Full successfully evolved and felt like her line of sight was higher than before now. She wondered if it worked, and Rihanna quickly went to cover her body. 
Brianna then showed Full how much she changed after evolution with the help of a shell becoming a mirror. Full was really happy and cheered up to have finally evolved like she always wanted to. Rihanna congratulated her, and Elvin was glad to see his daughter got bigger. He asked her if she was stronger now, then Full stated she was stronger in the terms of magic now. Then she wondered how to check if she could use magic, to which Heel offered to check her and he assured her that he could see the magic energy flowing from her, which meant that she could learn how to use magic now. Full wondered why her skin remained the same after evolving, while Rihanna looked like a human. Rihanna got flustered because her wish was to be attractive to Heel, so she told them it might differ depending on the person. Faris thought that he might evolve into something different as well, and next he used the change stone to evolve. But to everyone's surprise, Varus stayed the same. Tammy wondered why Varus didn't change. Then Varus noticed that something was actually different than before which came as a surprise to him, and he dropped his staff on the ground. Varus was very glad to observe that his back pain of many years had been healed. Heel was happy for him, but he wondered about his crest, then he noticed after taking a look at it that there was an incredible amount of magical energy bursting out of the Sorcery King crest. Varus then wanted to test out using his crest, and he could surely feel that as Sorcery King, he might be able to use any magic spell. So he started testing by launching a fire magic which engulfed a large area in flames. Nobody expected such a basic spell to be that powerful, and the next thing they saw was even more astounding. Varus' body was transformed looking more young and stronger. Varus claimed that Sorcery King was really incredible, but it was still difficult for him to adjust magic energy for now. Everyone was jaw-dropped seeing the big change, and Elvin asked Varus if it was really him. Varus answered that he was feeling very emotional since he never thought that he would be able to use magic one day. He felt like an entirely different person. Then Heel told him that his magic was incredible but his appearance had been changed as well. Varus didn't understand what he meant until he saw himself in the mirror and was left shocked by it. But he soon turned back into his old state and fell unconscious. After that, once he woke up, Heel informed Varus that he had heard about the Sorcerer King Crest having the power to change its owner into the form that uses magic energy most efficiently. He knew only this much since nobody would show him their real abilities back in the kingdom. Varus was glad to hear this much and he was looking forward to studying it further. Heel was glad to be of help, and he believed since Varus was very diligent, he would be able to master Sorcery King by himself. Then Full arrived and called him out asking if her new outfit looked great. He complimented her new outfit looking cool, and she stated that the princess had worked hard to make it for her. After that, she went back to start mining and Heel told her that she could use the magic crystals whenever she found them. He figured it would be okay since they have been finding less magic crystals now, and Rihanna and himself were already strengthened a lot, and Varus' magic was powerful on its own. He then got an idea to teach her about the transformation of magic energy into things like fire, and wind with magic circles, for which she would need to learn the secret letters to compose them. Full then felt a little bit overwhelmed but she was excited to keep going on. She put a lot of her time into training for magic, and her intuition wasn't bad to pick up things quickly. She started using magic attacks quickly, but she was still far off in their aim. She was glad to be able to just use them, and started jumping in happiness. Elvin got worried about her poor aim which hit Mappa, but Heel assured him it was pretty good for a first try. She was indeed hard-working, and Heel told Elvin she really looked up to her father's strength. Elvin said he would have been happy if that was the case but told him that she had always been the type to practice things a lot of times just to not be left behind by her friends. By narrating him a story of how she worked hard after losing to Princess in a game of stones, which caused her frustrate and cry. Heel then realized that it also meant that Full had been after evolving just because the Princess had evolved before, and she didn't like losing, especially against a friend. Heel was happy for her to have a friend to compete with but at the same time he was a bit jealous since he never had a friend like that before. Meanwhile, the work on harbor was going on, as they were getting the ship into the port to start the repairs on it. They built a dock for the harbor first, so that they could prioritize ship repairs, and Camu wanted to go back as soon as possible since there were many families of the Corvus tribe waiting and hiding. Heel told him that he didn't needed to worry about completing the harbor and set sail as soon as the ship repairs are done. To which Camu expressed his thanks for the kindness and told him him that he wanted to start trading soon so he should think of the things he would trade in the meantime. Some other orcs told Heel that he could leave the sea commerce to them and they promised a good stock of items. Heel could feel that they couldn't wait to set sail any longer and they were really excited. He was glad to know that he was finally going to start trading with the outside world. And for that, the orcs figured that he could start by selling gems from the Xiao, 
and asked if they could harvest some things from Yggdrasil as well. Heel stated that they would need to discuss it later on, but suddenly a shadow of a monster appeared inside the sea near the docks. The orcs were working just fine, and they had almost done their ship repairs as well. They figured to be finally able to go back to their main job, because they were getting anxious from not sailing for a long time. The shadow in the waters slowly came closer behind them and got out of the water startling the orcs. It was a snake-like monster and its sudden appearance made a commotion among the orcs. Heel heard the noise, then he looked into their direction wondering what that monster was. Whereas, the snake-like monster was destroying the things here and there on the harbor and orcs were running away from it. Then just in time, Camu came and kicked the monster, sending it flying backwards. He was doing his job to protect the harbor and was a bit disappointed by seeing the orcs running backwards in fear from the monster. He asked them to get ready to counterattack, but they were so scared of the monster because it looked like Leviathan to them. Camu didn't think of this happening to them and told them to take a look properly, as this monster was way smaller than Leviathan. Then more of those snake-like monsters appeared and attacked the scared orcs. Vapa came just in time to give Camu his new sword since his previous one was broken in the duel earlier. Camu took his new sword and slashed the monster from between like it was nothing. He was amazed by the sharpness of the Orichalcum sword and praised Mappa for his work. Heel arrived at the harbor asking Camu what monster it was. Camu stopped him from approaching any further stating it was dangerous, as the monster's part which was cut of its head still got up again. Then Camu told everybody else that this monster was an evil moray, as more of the snake-like monster started coming on the surface. But the next second, it turned out that the monster had a single main body, and those snake-like thing were just its arms. Camu stated that they needed to crush its main body, or else it would keep regenerating itself quickly. The monster regenerated its arm and attacked again with more of those snake arms, then it got hit by the fire attack casted by Full. She came to help them but the sight of seeing the snake arm regenerating was too disgusting for her to see, so she started running away from it. Then Heel helped her getting to a safer distance. She asked him what they should do to deal with this monster, to which Camu told them they needed to destroy the main body but its arms were in the way, and he would have dealt with it by cannons usually. They didn't want to risk damaging the harbor, meanwhile Varus got behind the monster while others were distracting it. He then used his sorcery king crest and transformed into his magic using state. Varus used water magic to form ropes of water to tie all the arms of the monster, and once he created an opening, he signaled to heal. Heal instructed Full to use lightning magic along with him, and they worked together to hit the monster, causing it to burst into pieces. They were happy having successfully dealt with it without causing any damage to the harbor, and Heal was glad to see how far Varus and Full had come in such a short time after evolving. Others were glad to witness her progress but Elvin was concerned about something else. Apparently, the orcs were feeling ashamed, because Camu had not thought that the fear of Leviathan would be carved such a deep hole inside their hearts. He realized that he made a mistake of not grasping his crew's mental state, and they wouldn't be able to voyage in the ocean with things like this. Heel tried talking to them but the reason was that they believed there wasn't only one Leviathan, so there might be another one around as well. Varus agreed as it could have won more around. Full stated it had very low chances since it was a legendary beast. Elvin figured it was still harder for the Corvus tribe to get out of their fear, and Varus told Camu if he wished to visit his people quickly, he could recruit some members from the Belden tribe as well. He declined saying that Belden tribe people won't be able to handle the patched ship, and more importantly the Corvus were the people of the sea, so if they couldn't sail then their pride would be lost. Heel and others could feel he was seriously feeling bad about it, and Rihanna spoke up suggesting to Heel if they could make a stronger ship that couldn't be broken even by Leviathan, which would also ease the Corvus tribe's worries. Heel liked the idea and thought of making the hull of the ship with metal armor, but Camu told him it would be difficult to implement since metal hull would make movements harder in the sea due to its heaviness. Full suggested they could use Orichalcum in that case because it was very light, to which Varus said it wouldn't be possible for them to do so. Orichalcum was rare and they couldn't have enough of it to be able to cover the giant hull of the ship with it. Then Mappa came with an idea and started drawing something on the ground. Heel looked at it, and it was the drawing of the Leviathan with one more thing which looked similar to Leviathan. Varus understood what Mappa was trying to say, and they went to the place with the dead Leviathan's body. Heel felt again how incredible it was to be able to defeat something like this. The scales of Leviathan withstood a rain of cannon first, and even magic didn't work on it. The normal tools couldn't even scratch it, so he took out his mithril ice axe and with the power of the cave king, he mined the scales of Leviathan. 
Its scales were lighter than they looked, and he guessed it was part of the reason the beast was so nimble and agile despite its size. And later on, to process these scales, Mappa made tools made of mithril by melting the arrowheads they used earlier against the Leviathan. Mappa and Kamu discussed together on what would need to be reinforced besides the exterior, and they also thought of redesigning the infrastructure. Their plan was to reinforce the scales as much as possible while keeping their sailing abilities along with its durability. And this was how they started making a ship which would use Orichalcum as its frame, and things like the inner boards and mast were to be made from Yggdrasil branches. They decided to use Leviathan's scales for making its armor, and with all of this, they wished to concentrate on making a ship for the Corvus tribe as they looked at the building of the ship. After that, in the evening Heel told Camu it was near the time of dinner, to which he said he would be there soon. Camu was seeing the place where their dead comrades were buried by Heel and others with respect, for which Camu felt more than enough to thank him. Camu started telling Heel about hundred years ago, when one man brought together the orcs with nowhere to go after being broken through the continuous wars against humans and other tribes, and took them to the sea. His name was Camu, an hero orc of the Corvus tribe, who managed to build a large fleet on his own that could even take on a nation's army. And after that, that name kept being passed down to the leaders of the Corvus tribe for generations. But Camu was upset when it was his turn. He got traitors in his tribe along with him finding himself unable to encourage his people to head out to the sea again. Heel felt sorry for him. Then Camu said that he wanted to be strong enough for others, to make sure not to bring shame to the proud name Camu with determination in his eyes. Next day, the ship building was done, so they opened the water gate and with the help of golems as well, they managed to take out the newly built ship to the seas. It was looking tougher than any other ship, with Leviathan's scales imbued on it giving it a clear look of a beast in itself. Full and Ashton were amazed to see the ship, but Heel was concerned about something else, and Rihanna could see that was because the Corvus people looked a little nervous. Whereas, Camu was announcing to his crew about their test training, and asked them to feel cheered up for it. He noticed there was still some unsettling behavior among them, and he closed his eyes, being sure about something he planned with Heel, and signaled him to initiate it. Heel believed in Camu to take things from here and he commanded Golem number 16 to come out. Others wondered what Heel was doing. While under the waters, there was a large shadow of something huge, which emerged from the water to the surface in front of the Corvus tribe's new ship. The watchers of the crew alerted the warning about something ahead, and the members of the crew wondered if it was a monster. The Golem number 16 came out, and it was looking like a snake-like monster, which was exactly what the Corvus tribe were scared of, since it looked like Leviathan to them, and then 16 hit them with its magic attack. Their ship managed to take on the magic attack without any trouble, while the crew was in commotion being scared of 16 thinking it was a Leviathan. They told Camu they needed to get out of here quickly, and Camu calmed them down. He explained to them that the ship didn't flinch even after being attacked like that, and he instructed them to stay composed, taking a good look at their opponent. When they turned to look at it properly, they observed it was made of rock. Meanwhile, on the land, others wondered why a golem was shaped like Leviathan, and why it was attacking them. Heel requested them not to interfere in any way, as Camu announced to his crew the beginning of a mock battle based on fighting the Leviathan. The crew was scared that they couldn't take out something that huge, to which Camu reminded them that they used to have pride in being invincible warriors of the sea. But after losing without making a dent against Leviathan, he understood their fears. But he made it clear to them that he refused to give up, as he held a changed stone in his hand, wishing to challenge the sea again. Others realized the stone in his hands, and Camu went ahead to jump down the water saying goodbye to his old perfect body. He instructed them to watch him closely as he made the debut of the new Camu, the leader of the Corvus tribe. He dived straight into the water and the stone heard his wish, started to glow. Others were surprised to see it and wondered how it would turn out, then Camu emerged from the sea. He had successfully evolved into an Aquaman, and now he was able to use his crest of the sea dragon. He was all set to take on the golem number 16, and swam at a very high speed towards it. 16 attacked it with many rays but Camu was able to dodge them with ease in water thanks to his aquatic powers. He was fast like he was flying on the water, and even Camu himself was amazed to see just how well the sea dragon was able to manipulate the water around him. He was now determined to confront 16 head on, so he went closer to it but since it was made of rock his defensive power was great. He was dodging 16's attacks while trying to land a hit on it. The other orcs saw their boss fighting by himself, Rihanna and Heel were concerned, thinking even an evolved Camu might have trouble against the golem. But then Camu blocked its attack with his bare hands, although he got pushed back in the water. 
the golem charged on him. Then the other orcs of the crew brought their ship closer to Camu and set the armory to shoot against the golem. They didn't want to let their boss fight alone, shot cannons and arrowheads against the golem trying to push it back, making an opening for Camu. Camu was glad to see their spirits were high again, so he went underwater for his next move and used the power of his crest sea dragon to create a tornado around the golem number 16 which swallowed it completely despite its huge size. And once 16 was inside the tornado, its movements were limited while Camu was freely able to move around. He was going to destroy the golem, hoping that Heel would get it fixed later on. So he took out his sword and imbued it with water around it, turning it into a drill. Camu formed a trident drill from his sword, and he stabbed 16 with it causing a huge collision which broke the 16 completely. Everyone was relieved to see that Camu managed to defeat the golem even though it was a mock battle. The orcs were proud of their captain who took the decision of sacrificing his older body for their sake. After that, things settled down a bit, everyone went back to the harbor. Camu and other orcs were welcomed by Heel. He told Camu how incredible he was out there, but Camu stated he was able to do it thanks to his crew. He felt that their doubts and distrust of his own strength along with his crew's was palpable. He said sorry to everyone in his crew and asked them if they would still want to challenge the seas with him. The orcs were always excited to follow him, as they told him that he didn't need to ask them in the first place since he was always their boss. Elvin then teased Camu about the fact that he had to give up on his beautiful body he was so proud of. Then Camu removed his shirt showing off his new shining body, which was also handsome in his eyes. He believed he had just awakened into a new stage of beauty along with the perfect ship and the perfect crew. He believed that their voyage would surely be a success from now on, and Heel agreed to it as well. After that, Camu spent a week testing and fine-tuning their ship while Heel and Varus decided what they would like to trade. And the day before Camu were to set sail, they had a big farewell party. The Corvus tribe enjoyed the feast to the fullest and at the night time when things got calm, Heel went to check out the ship along with Rihanna and Shell. She wished to see the ship from up close as well and asked Heel if he liked ships. He told her it wasn't the case but he has always been fascinated by the outside world they could reach with the ships. Rena asked him if he wanted to travel by ship one day, to which he told her that he hadn't thought of that far but it was still just a fantasy since the time back in the kingdom where he couldn't find a place for himself. But now that he got a place to live with all of them in Xiao, it had become his home which made Rihanna happy. Then Riel noticed someone was on the ship watching Spot. Then Camu came down from it knowing that he couldn't be left unseen by Reel's eyes. Heel apologized for being on board without telling him, but Camu was okay stating that this ship was partially his as well, so he was always welcomed here as the only human he approved of. Camu then told him that he wanted to discuss something with him, and Heel wondered what it could be since Camu was sounding serious. Camu then spoke up telling him that it was about his homeland, the Kingdom of Sandfails, which was ruled by his father. Heel asked him back what he knew about his homeland, the Kingdom of Sandfails, to which Camu broke a shocking revelation to him that the Claude's faction who betrayed him was hired by the royal family of Sandfails. He was left shocked by the news and couldn't believe it at first since the kingdom of Sandfails hated the monsters. Camu apologized for staying silent about it for this long, but when they chased Claude, they found a survivor among the remains of the wreck done by the Leviathan. The survivor was barely hanging on to his life, and in his last moments, he confessed that their task was to suppress all the powerful monster tribes near the kingdom. In return, they were promised vast rewards, along with having the back of the most powerful country in the whole Berlian continent. Although their original plan was to hire Camu, Claude declined as he knew Camu wouldn't accept it. Heel was left astounded knowing it was his father who ordered it and wanted to know the reason behind it. Camu then informed Heel that the Kingdom of Sandfails itself was an old country who gained major expansions during the reign of his father, to the point they became the largest country in the continent. So hiring the Corvus tribe was most likely just a way for them to expand their influence further. And having said that, he had been concerned about something else as well. He asked Heel again if he was really expelled, to which he agreed, but Camu asked him if that was really the case, because the Xiao and the Cave King, followed by the treasure trove of undiscovered resources underground, and the crest with the power to dig them out freely was too much of a coincidence to be happening at once for the things to be meshing with each other too well like this. After hearing this, it couldn't be helped but to make Heel think that his father might have already known about the power of Cave King, and also about what was below the ground in the Xiao but it would be strange since he had no reason to keep quiet about the power of his crest. He figured if he wanted to develop the island then he would have sent more people with him, to which Camu said that the reason for that could be that whatever was laid dormant in the Xiao, 
Heel's father didn't want it to be made public. Brianna quickly caught on that Camu was pointing at the underground ruins. Camu continued to speak that he had his doubts about Heel in the beginning as well, and thought that Heel might be playing dumb about the whole thing with him. But after living here, he realized that Heel was really different, so he trusted him and put his hand on Heel's shoulder to tell him to keep it in his mind, that he was still a prince of Sandfales, and Xiao was a territory of his country, so there might come a day when he have to face his own country to protect Xiao from them. Heel understood what Camu was saying, and he remembered back what he forgot, that he still had the connections with the Sandfales and his father even though he was sent away. After that, Camu and his Corvus tribe set sail the next day having warm-hearted regards for everyone from the Xiao. They would be going on now to reunite with their families which stayed behind in hiding, and he also got the number 16 repaired, sending it along with Camu to escort them on their voyage making sure they would be safe. Then he discussed with everyone about the conversation he had with Camu, and said sorry to them that the main culprit behind the attacks on the Belden tribe and Tigris tribe turned out to be the royal family of the Sandfales. Elvin told him that he had no reason to apologize and he wasn't at fault, and they suggested that they should be discussing now about what to do about this. Varys thought deeply considering it would surely be problematic of Heel having contacts from his country, whereas Elvin was confident enough to send anyone who trouble monsters here flying. Varus warned him they could start a war, and it made Heel worried to have involved them in something terrible. Elvin told him not to feel that way, because Xiao was undoubtedly everyone's home now. His eyes opened after hearing that, and he decided it was no time for him to act timid, and asked everyone for their help for what's next. Others felt assured by his cheerfulness, and Varus told him that one of the reasons for sending him here could be the exploitation of resources, so they might come soon enough eventually to trade with him which meant that monsters and humans could coexist not because of mutual understanding, but the mutual interest in that way, which would also bring big riches to his country. It would prove Heel's reign over the Xiao over this territory was right, but even so there was still a possibility of Sandfales interfering with Xiao. Ashton asked if Varus was saying that they needed to be strong enough to negotiate with the kingdom, to which he agreed, while Full and Rihanna had their own simple ideas to develop the island even more. Ashton thought of how they would negotiate, but it depended more on what the true intentions of the Sandfales were. Heel reasoned that it could be what Camu and Rihanna pointed out earlier, that the key to finding out the reason might be in the civilization lying in the underground ruins of the Xiao. Varus said that they still knew nothing about the Xiao, and hoped that he would be able to decipher the books in the library. Teal then thought of all the things and after putting them together, he came up with one solution they could do, which was to gather the most elite miners among their ranks and form the Xiao Ruins excavation team, with Heel, Full, Kobolds and the Slimes and Cave Spiders as well. Full then teased him saying it was the same group that always mine, but he just wanted to set the motivation inside them, by setting a fresh feeling in their minds. Rihanna prepared portable rations for everyone, and told him to make sure to come back before dinner. Heel thanked her for the help, and with things set, he prepared to go on excavating the new ruins. He figured that he needed to dig out the mystery of Xiao to know exactly what his father wanted to claim for himself. Full asked him if he had a plan to go about digging the ruins more, to which he told her that they would first start by investigating around the ruins that have already been excavated while making sure not to dig too hard and break any ruins. So, they were after the magic energy which could be felt from any hidden ruins, and also keep an eye on any reaction from real as well. They kept digging carefully and advancing further for a week, but strangely they didn't find anything new. He couldn't even find the remains of the passages between the rooms. Then Ashton stated the way they reached the library through a teleportation device might also be used to travel among the other ruins they already found out. It meant that there never existed any passages between the ruins and they each had a teleportation device, which might have been lost later on. Heel thought it could be possible, and wondered what they should use as a reference to dig onwards. Ashton told him it was almost time for their dinner, so they should return and take it one step at a time, or Rihanna might yell at them for being too late. Heel agreed and told everyone it was over for today, but he noticed that Real was nowhere to be found. Everyone started looking for Real thinking she might have gone somewhere on her own again. Heel heard the sound of scratching, and when he followed them, he reached Real. He got worried when he noticed that Real's paw was bleeding and told her to calm down but Real was not stopping. Full stated it looked painful, and asked what happened to Real. Heel told her that Real looked like she wanted to dig at the spot ahead of them no matter what, and Full decided to dig there. 
After she hit the spot with her ice axe, she, Ashton and Hainus along with Heel were all surprised to see there were the remains of bird bones deep inside the cave. He then observed that Reel was pointing at an egg, which seemed to be the dead bird's egg, but it was fossilized. He assumed that the corpse had been underground for so long that it turned into a stone, and he tried to explain that to Reel. But Reel didn't seem to want to leave the egg, and wanted to save it no matter what. Heel and Ashton were confused about what to do now, then thinking it might make Reel sad later on. Rihanna decided to do something about it, so that they could take the egg along with them. She then took the egg, and made a harness on Reel's back which could also hold the egg attached to Reel's back. It looked cute on Reel, and Heel asked if it was heavy for her. But she seemed to be just fine, and happy in fact to be able to carry the egg around. After that, Reel didn't want to leave the petrified egg's side, and kept it close even at the time of sleeping. Heel started feeling a little like he might actually hatch, seeing how much Reel cared about it but he thought it might not be possible. Although the egg seemed to be alive while they were sleeping. Next day, they went to dig again and Hainus found something strange. He told Heel it seemed to be something new, and he felt an unnatural sound coming from the spot he was digging on. But Heel couldn't hear anything from that spot, neither could Full either. However, Hainus said that he had great hearing even among the Tigris tribe, so he was sure about something being unnatural but he couldn't put it into words. He tried to explain that there was a consistent flow ahead of them, without any fluctuations and Reel was also sleeping so they couldn't confirm it. Heel decided to just dig there which seemed to be the most suitable way to go about it. They replied to Hainus hearing while they were digging to make sure they went in the right direction, and advanced for some time until Heel Heel himself could hear the water flow as well. He dug the direction the sound was coming from, and it turned out to be a hollow space behind it. Then as he was about to step ahead, Terran used her web and stuck it with Heel. He was startled by it, then saw that Terran did the right thing as he turned out to be on an elevated spot without footing ahead. He thanked Terran for the help, and discovered a large structure ahead which looked like some kind of tower or a pillar, and it was constantly producing water from its top. It was completely man-made, which explained Hainus' description of something being unnatural, and they managed to successfully find other ruins. He wondered how far down this pillar went, but it was so deep that even Ashton couldn't see the bottom with his optimized eyes. Then Ashton noticed the water closely which was gushing out from the surface of the pillar, and it didn't have any pipes or outlet attached behind it. He'll notice there was a blue stone generating the water, and he asked Terran to get that stone embedded in the pillar. Terran used her spider web again and plucked one of the blue stones from the pillar and after examining it with the Cage King Crest, he learned that it was the spring stone which creates water via the magic energy. He was amazed to see such a thing could make the water, and figured that they would be able to have a source of water anywhere as long as they have it. Ashton thought deeply about the source of water being here in the underground world, so he pointed out that they might be able to reach out to the other ruins if they just follow the flow of the water. Heel understood his reasoning was right, and decided to go down, but suddenly Hainus sensed another sound, and this time it was the sound of digging somewhere nearby. He heard it properly again and pointed out the wall from which the sound of digging was coming from. He looked into it and sensed magical energy coming from the wall, which meant that whatever was coming from the wall had the magic energy and alerted everyone else, as the mysterious digging source came closer to them. Heel could sense the magic of this mysterious creation was powerful, and then it finally came out after making it through the wall by digging. It was the shadow of something large, and they wondered what it could be. Heel thought it could also be a legendary dragon, so Hainus stayed on alert. Then the mysterious creature shouted at Heel and others, mistaking them as the underground people. But surprisingly, the mysterious creature also lost its footing, and fell down the ridge. It shouted for help, so Heel quickly asked Terran to shoot a spider web at the creature and protect it from falling. Heel, Ashton and Hainus tried to save it but it was too heavy, and at this rate it might fall down taking them alongside with it. He asked them to hold on for a second and went at some distance to use his crest powers and process rocks to form the step holders on the wall just below the mysterious creature. Meanwhile, Full and others grip lost from the spider rope but the dragon was alright because of those step holders below it. Heel asked it to climb the rock stakes, and Full was surprised that they managed to save the dragon without even thinking. She wondered if it would eat them, but everyone was confused and nervous about it as the dragon came upwards climbing. Dragon asked if Heel and others were the owners of these underground ruins, which caught them by surprise as they had the same thoughts about the dragon. After that, they got him to the surface where he enjoyed the tasty food to its fullest, since he had eaten nothing but been preserving the food for a long time. Heel learned that the dragon's name was Roydon, and he was actually an earth dragon. 
Forrest couldn't believe that he would get to see a legendary dragon from the legends he heard so much. Full also seemed to know about the legend but the actual dragon looked a little different than she used to think of. He'll asked Roydon if the underground ruins were his, to which Roydon told him that he was not from these parts himself. He claimed to have come here from the Elto continent, which was unheard of by everyone here. Roydon informed them that his land was a red-hot land where volcanoes explode, rivers of magma flow everywhere, and many territorial dragons used to fight there all the time. He asked if the Elto continent was near, to which Roydon claimed that he dug through the bottom of the ocean and straight east for about a month and reached here. Heel was shocked to hear that he dug from the bottom of the ocean and Roydon continued to add that he was scared by them at first since he hadn't seen people like them and Roydon thanked him for saving him earlier. Meanwhile, Heel was upset about him losing the digging scale, and then Roydon continued to tell them that they might be thinking that he was talking to them, but actually he was just communicating through his thoughts by the help of telepathy. Heel asked him if he could also read their hearts, but it wasn't the case but almost similar. Roydon could sense and understand the thoughts of the people he wanted to talk with, and the words Heel and others heard from him were Roydon's thoughts being translated into their own thoughts inside their head. It helped them not to have any language problems while conversing with each other. Full got excited to know if telepathy was some kind of magic or a crest ability, to which Roydon told her that he didn't know anything about magic or crests, but as Earth Dragon, he used to send his thoughts through his horn. Heel and Varus took a proper look at the horn, and realized it was where the magic was gathered in Roydon. It was expected since he was an ancient dragon, which goes without saying that they were sure to have strange powers they weren't even aware of. After that, Roydon mentioned that he was curious about the huge tree behind them and asked if it was Yggdrasil. Roydon stated he knew about the tree from a long time ago, and it was surely more majestic in person than he heard of. He believed if something like this tree could exist, then there was sure to be a chance of other rumors he heard being true might not just be a fairy tale. He asked them if there was a continent around here called Paradise. Heel wasn't sure about it, and Roydon added that he heard it was a continent far in the east where humans and monsters lived along with all sorts of races with a rich culture and surroundings full with nature as well. Roydon then noticed it was a small island but it kind of matched those rumors he heard, and Heel thought if he was talking about the Berlian continent. Rihanna wasn't sure about it either. Roydon then thought it might not be true. Then Varus asked him if he was looking for a new place to move. Roydon declined and said that his goal was something else, leading to a conclusion that meeting with Heel and others might be a stroke of luck. He asked everyone to gather around and take a look, as he put his basket on the ground. They came to check what he was talking about. Then Roydon opened the lock on the basket claiming to show them a rare selection of items from the land of Elto from far away. He introduced himself again, as Roydon, the traveling merchant, and asked them to take a look at his incredible items. Heel didn't expect Roydon to be a merchant, to which Roydon stated that his business was not going well in Elto because of all the fighting so he expanded it to a new land, here in Xiao. He took out dozens of never-before-seen items, but more surprising to Heel was how Roydon's basket was able to store this many items inside it. Roydon answered him that it was a compression basket made from Yajijin lizard stomach, which compressed anything put inside it making it able to store anything. They liked the items, and some of them looked really beautiful as well since they were all made from the dragon materials. He informed them that the vase and items was made from processed scales, the knife from nails, and the same with the other items made from high-quality dragon materials. Heel could understand why he had never seen these items before since dragons were rare to be found in the first place. Roydon then showed Heel the dragon eggs of Fire Dragon and Wyvern, which were both flying dragons. But they had ice on them, so Varus asked why it was there, to which Roydon told them it was to preserve the eggs to be able to be boiled and eaten later on. Heel was surprised they were just for food from Roydon's point of view, and according to him, it was normal in fact, for dragons to think of other dragons' bodies as resources. They could also warm and hatch them if they wanted to. Heel asked Roydon if the hatched dragons would become attached to them, to which Roydon agreed, saying the dragons thought of the first person they see as their parents. Full stated to Heel that they should raise one, which would make them able to fly, so Heel told Roydon that he would take an egg from him, and asked how much he would want for it. Roydon then pointed out at Yggdrasil and asked if he could take some saplings from the Yggdrasil. It was because Elto had become a wasteland now but he thought that Yggdrasil could be used to make it green with the Yggdrasil, just like they used to be in the past with many Yggdrasil already extinct there. He planned to grow them there once the volcanic activity stopped. Rihanna was happy to think Roydon wanted to make his home come to life again but the reason was surprisingly something else. He wanted to make some profits when the time comes and sell those saplings, just as expected of a merchant. 
After that, he took the saplings, and in return he'll got a dragon egg along with many items for Mappa to study. Roydon also added something as his thanks for the food earlier, and have him a package which was made from the same material as the compression basket with some rocks and dirt he found along the way. Heel was glad to have that since the dirt would surely be helpful for them to expand their fields. Roydon was happy and figured that Heel would become a regular customer of his. After that, Roydon went to rest for a night, and then went back promising to come visit again. Nobody expected that somebody else would become the first business partner of the Xiao instead of Camu. Heel learned that there was still a whole world out there with some continents like Elto with dragons. He wondered how many civilizations might be out there just like that, and it included the one he wanted to find out about under the Xiao. So he went back to the spot they met Royd on, to continue their exploration of the ruins. He figured since the water gushed from the pillar with the spring stones, they should follow the flow of water to find more about the ruins. He knew that he would need to take Terran's help to get down the cliff, while Ashton stated he wouldn't have any problem in going down by himself. Soon afterwards, Rihanna joined their team for the investigation with excitement and thanked Heel for letting her tag along his exploration of the mystery of Xiao underground. Ashton told him that he would go first and asked him to follow after him, and left immediately. Heel found it impressive, and next was Hainus' turn to go. He took Full and Reel along with him, whereas Heel and Rihanna decided to come down with the help of Terran. He was a bit nervous from having Rihanna so close to him, but he couldn't afford to be distracted right now. Before they came for the investigation earlier, Heel prepared by taking care of his tools. Rihanna saw him. He told her that he learned about tending to his tools from Mappa, and his ice axe was sparkling now. She then asked him if he was concerned about investigation of new ruins, to which he expressed both his curiosity and worries for wanting to know what probably his father was after. He couldn't honestly think what his father used to think since he never tried. He didn't even remember talking to him, other than the times they exchanged formal words or orders from his father but aside from that he never heard from him. His father's words were absolute in the royal court, so he figured that he would be annoyed if he ended up digging what his father wanted all this time. Rihanna then comforted him and told him with determination to go and uncover the secrets of Xiao and learn what his father wanted. He was back to his determination as an individual and wanted to dig. He felt that even though he turned his back on his father and kingdom, he could now face them back as he went down the cliff on Terran, marking the next stage of his exploration of the Xiao. As they went down, Terran kept her spider web attached for safety and some few meters down, he could see a faint light and they soon reached the bottom. It was like a large semi-dome around them, with the canals flowing the water produced from above. Rihanna saw that this place was in pretty bad shape due to the time passed away. Teal thought it would have been good if the path ahead of them was intact but now, he wondered where the others were. Full then called out Heel from the other side of the pillar and told him that they found a canal which went deeper. She showed him the way, and he saw Ashton standing there as well, while Hainus was inside the canal trying to hear what was ahead of them by hitting the walls slightly with the back of his sword, and hearing the sounds carefully after that. Teal wondered what he was doing, then once he was done, Hainus came back and assured them that they didn't need to worry about the canal collapsing and it would become more intricate as deep as they would enter inside it. So there was a chance for them to get lost as well. Meanwhile Heel was surprised to see Hainus could tell all of that just by hearing that. Rihanna said that they could mark the ways as they go to not get lost, and Full was excited for the exploration ahead of them. They went ahead in the canal and Heel was surprised to see there was something like this as well down here all this time. He wondered who made it and why, to which Rihanna told him it might have been the humans because they had seen signs of some being before by that statue of a woman in the library. Ashton stated they could be unknown to Berlian, but their descendants could be living in some other land than here. Full then said they could also be building and living underground over here as well which might make them the underground people Roydon talked about. Full then noticed something on their way, and when they went to check it turned out to be just some slimes. Heel said they should leave slimes alone as they were harmless. They learned that there were slimes living underground as well, and Heel remembered that he met shells in caves as well. One more figure came to his mind, Mappa and he wondered what era did Mappa come from or if he might know something about these ruins. The canal ahead led to another canal, and they tried to follow the sounds of water. After that, they reached a wide hallway which seemed like a place leading to something big and open. Hainus stated he tried to follow the sound of water flowing beneath it, and it was leading ahead to the gate. So Heel decided to move forward, and Shell noticed something and started jumping around Heel. In the next second, the door suddenly closed along with the entrance they came from. 
they got trapped inside, and Rihanna started to sense magical energy coming from the walls. Some mysterious blocks started coming out from the walls and transformed into a security drone, which surely looked like more trouble to them as it started to glow. The drone shooted rays from them, and Heal immediately casted shield to protect everyone just in time. He told others to watch out, and he realized that these drones were some sort of security guards. He used thunder magic to destroy them, but to his surprise the drone absorbed his magic attack and shot it back at them. He got pushed back from the blast, learning what these drones were capable of. Full stated they couldn't attack them this way, then suddenly one of the drones came closer to her and absorbed the shield she was using. Things started to look bad for them. Now Ashton went ahead and made a move to attract the drone's attention. Ashton stated if they couldn't use magic against these drones, then they should directly cut them as he started by cutting a few drones which were closer to them. He prepared to charge for his next attack, showing how powerful the captain of the Imperial Guard of Tybris tribe Gale Ashton was. He quickly dashed, starting to take out the drones at the distance now. The drones tried to aim at him but he was just too fast for them to catch up with his speed. Ashton cut them instantly, and Rihanna, Heel were surprised by such high speed while full cheered on for him. Now that Ashton destroyed some drones, the others around Heel also turned back and moved towards Ashton. Heel told Hainus that he should also go and help Ashton, but Hainus told him to rest assured since his brother Ashton was enough for them by himself. Ashton was surprisingly very good in the battles, then the drones attacked him in a pattern by bouncing heat rays off each other in coordination and managed to land a hit on Ashton. But Ashton was not much affected by it, although he was surrounded by dozens of more drones right away. Then Hainus provided cover to Ashton showing that their coordination was better than the drones, and with their own coordination attacks, which was actually their speciality, Ashton and Hein took on the whole folk of the drones. Ashton put an end to them with his shadow slash which was fast enough to make anyone believe that Ashton was everywhere. All the drones were done before Heal and others even realized, and he informed about it to Heal that they could move on forward now. Everyone was safe thanks to Ashton and Hainus, then Heal went to check what these golems were made of. He found some heart stones inside the wrecks of the drones, he figured that he could suck them, and could use it to make something new out of it. He found the materials used to make them among which were, the magic absorbing crystal, floating stone enabling them to fly, and black iron making them resistant to heat. Full tried using the floating stone and it worked. Heel figured out how these drones were able to work like that, and he learned something new from this. After that, Ashton told him that the drones seemed to be guarding something, so they should check it out. Heel agreed then the door ahead of them started to open without them needing to break it. Ashton then sensed something was inside the door this time, and after watching it carefully, a golem appeared out of the door which didn't seem to make things any easier for them. The appearance of a new opponent was least unexpected for everyone. Heel saw the heart stone inside it so he figured it was another doll. This time, this golem looked really strong and its appearance was just like an amalgamation of a knight and horse. Ashton told everyone not to take their eyes off it, and the golem unexpectedly spoke in some unknown language. Heel was surprised to see it spoken up but he couldn't understand what it was saying. He thought again if there were really anything like talking golem but according to Full, it was all gibberish. Rihanna stated that the golem's language might be the same as in those books they found in the library earlier. However, Heel tried to check if the golem would understand him by going ahead and trying to speak with it, telling it that he was from the surface above this land. The golem couldn't understand anything he said, then it took out its sword imbued with magic from its arm. Rihanna and Full were dazed by it, and Hainus warned them to stay back. Hainus blocked the attack of the golem, while Heel still tried to tell the thing that they were not its enemies. The golem only increased the power in its attack even further, and Hainus realized that now that battling with it was inevitable. Ashton joined the fight, and instructed Hainus to try capturing the golem without destroying it if possible. Both of them fought the golem but the golem turned out to be greatly skilled as well since it was able to keep up with both of them at once. They clashed with each other, swords sounded all around the place, and it was keeping a stand of its own against them. Ashton and Hainus were even pushed back from its attacks, and they knew what they were up against was really good at this. Full thought of helping them out and attacked it with magic, but even though Ashton tried to stop her, she attacked and the golem raised its left arm which had the absorbing crystal. It absorbed her attack, and she said sorry for making it tougher. Ashton guessed that being the case, then the golem turned its arm into a crossbow and shot an arrow imbued with fire magic. Everyone was alerted by the bow and Heel immediately casted a boulder in front of them to protect themselves from the arrows. He told everyone to hide behind it while the golem kept attacking them. After that, the golem charged at them with a spear in its arm which was strong enough to crush the boulder they were hiding behind. 
Fortunately, everyone managed to dodge the impact, and Heel learned that this thing was actually on a different level than the other golems and dolls they've come across. Ashton figured they were too naive thinking they would be able to catch it, so he stepped up the game by using its phantom dash with fast speeds like a wind. But surprisingly, the golem managed to see through Ashton's attack despite its speed and landed a hit on Ashton. Ashton managed to block it with his sword, and he was shocked to see that the golem managed to keep up with his gale wind's speed. He got back then Golem rushed to attack both of them making them feel the tension of its next attack in advance. It attacked both of them with unforeseeable speed, and Heal, Rihanna and Full could see that Ashton and Hainus were being pushed back now, and they couldn't do anything to help them either. Heal then got an idea, and while Hainus and Ashton were keeping it busy, he planned something with Rihanna and Full thinking it might work. They started putting their plan into action right away seeing the emergence of the situation. He then asked Real, who was sleeping until now in his bag to use its clairvoyance to spot the water line. And when he could see it himself, he destroyed it with his ice axe. Once the water line was destroyed, Ashton and Hainus noticed the impact behind them. Soon the whole area got filled with water reaching a little above their feet. Next, he asked Hainus and Ashton to retreat to the walls, and after that, he along with Rihanna and Full, casted the freeze spell on the whole surface covered with water while they were being above the grove with the help of Terran's spider webs. The golem also jumped from the water to dodge the freeze attack, and soon the whole area was covered in ice. It turned out that Heel was aiming for its hooves and the legs which didn't seem to be suitable for movements on the ice, so next Terran used her spider web on its leg and pulled it down. Ashton and Hainus saw it was their chance to act, and they started attacking the golem from sides jumping from wall to wall. They thought they finally got the golem, but the next move of the golem surprised them as it hit the ground to jump upwards and show its speed in the same way Ashton and Hainus were. Everybody was surprised as they didn't expect the golem could move like that, while Ashton and Hainus were left speechless in the center. Then even before they realized, the golem got between them and attacked them by rotating its arms, sending them flying to the walls on the sides. Heel was shocked as well as Hainus about how the golem managed to move like that all of a sudden. Then they noticed its legs had transformed their shape into a pointy figure, and after that, it went to direct its next attack at Heel. Hainus and Rihanna couldn't make it in time to save him, and Heel knew he couldn't run from it so he got ready to face it head on. Then a shell came and stood in front of him. Heel told Shell to watch out, but Shell stayed there to protect Heel but the golem suddenly stopped its attack seeing Shell. They didn't expect that to happen, and golem got back from Heel. Others came to Heel quickly and asked if he was alright. But Ashton was thinking why did the golem stop attacking them. The golem stood there and watched Shell being with Heel in a friendly way. The golem started speaking, and this time, the voice was different than before. Heel wondered where it was coming from, then Hainus told him it was coming from inside the golem, and its belly mechanism started to open up. But to everyone's surprise a small girl came out from within the golem rubbing her eyes. They thought that they had been fighting a kid all this time who was controlling the golem. But it didn't seem to be the case when they saw that the golem was talking to her, and she was replying to it in their own language unknown to Heel. Then she looked at Heel and even though imperfect, she spoke in his language. Phil asked if she was able to understand them, to which the small girl replied that she would learn their language after listening to them talking. They couldn't help but be surprised about this kid with an intelligence like that. They were astounded by the fact they witnessed a kid popping out from a golem in the underground ruins who also happened to learn to talk to them so fast. She tried to walk towards Heel but slipped on the ice. He asked her if she was alright, to which she spoke something to the golem and it came to carry her. She then noticed the hole in the canal and had some commands, which made the flow of water stop for some time. And then on her next command, more flying drones appeared from the door ahead of them. Full thought they were reinforcements, and the small kid called the drones as Argo and told them not to attack anyone. Heel realized as well it was their name and then the drones used magic inside them to start repairing the broken canal. They understood she was giving the orders to the dolls indeed. The kid asked them what happened to the Argo in this passage. She saw they were destroyed by them, and Heel tried to explain her that he didn't have any other choice, saying sorry for it. After that, the kid heard them out learning that they were from the surface, and Heel also apologized to her for damaging the ruins. But he wanted to find the reason why his father sent him to this place which might be down here, and asked the kid to tell him more about these ruins. The kid realized as if it was her first time knowing that she had been underground up until now, which was a little bit unexpected for Heel. She was also sure only now that she was in ruins, and it seemed that she had been sleeping for so long. 
and now she didn't have any information about this place or whatsoever. Heel understood that her memory might have been affected, so he asked her why she was guarding the ruins and who she was. She answered that it was her duty to protect this land, and she didn't remember anything other than that. Meanwhile, Full was trembling from the cold and sneezed, then said sorry but she couldn't help it since it was cold here. Heel asked the kid if they could go somewhere else, and he agreed that it was their own fault for that. Then the kid asked him why the Kavo, referring to the slime shell, protected him from the Balshan's attack. Balshan was the name of the golem who pushed Ashton and Hainus into a corner earlier. He told her its name was Shell, who was his friend and claimed that he had been saved by Shell many times. The kid listened to him and told them to come after her. Heel asked her what they should call her. She didn't seem to have understood that properly. Then Heel asked her what did the Balshan call her when they talk, just like how his name was Heel and introduced others as well. She understood a name was something to them apart, so she told them that they could call her by Nane. Rihanna and Heel said it was nice to meet her. Nana then mentioned that Heel seemed to have a strange feature. She was actually talking about his cave king crest. Then they went to the door ahead, and when they entered, more Argo got activated but Nana commanded them not to attack them. She assured them they Argo won't attack when they were with her. Full then asked Nana what language she spoke, but she didn't have a name of her language, and apparently, she didn't seem to have talked to anyone besides Balsham. Full asked her she might have been feeling lonely like that, to which she stated there was no shortage of manpower, referring to the systematic way of seeing things. Meanwhile, it was surprising to Rihanna and Heel to see how quick Nana was becoming fluent in the Balon language which was incredible. Full then suggested that they should take Nana to the library because she could read them, but Nana told them that she couldn't leave this place. Full told her that she would be welcomed, and if they discover the secrets of the Xiao, she might also recover her memory. But Nana stated that even though she didn't have her memories, she still needed to carry out her duty to protect this place. If she were to be gone, then all the defenders, the golems would lose control which would create a problem in itself. Rihanna suggested that she would bring books next time, and they reached to a mysterious large door, and Nana told them that the main area was beyond it. Hainus then smelled the scent of something up ahead which he couldn't believe to be underground. Teal was confused by it, then Nana commanded the gate to open. As the gate was opening, a bright light came from it. Everyone couldn't believe their eyes, as the sight ahead of them seemed completely out of this world. They wondered if they were outside, because the place was filled with greenery, and it even had fishes in the river flowing within the place. Heel looked up to the ceiling to check if they were really inside the ruins, and realized there was a big sunstone, and he heard real barking happily as she witnessed more slimes in the place. There were golems as well surprisingly but they seemed to be there to look after the place and cut the leaves properly keeping them shaped beautifully. Nona told them not to startle the Kavo, and Heel asked her if she looked after the slimes as well. She stated that protecting the Kavo was part of her duties, then Heel remembered something. He asked Nana who assigned her to this duty, and she replied it was unclear even to herself and it was hard to explain really. She thought about it, and told him that it would be easier to just show him. She then guided them the way, while they were loving the beautiful path like a tunnel of trees. She took them to the place where she woke up and received her duty. She started telling him about her story from the start, that she woke up in darkness at first, unable to see anything while feeling cramped there. After that, when she got into a brighter world, the first thing she saw was Balshan kneeling next to her, and the second thing she saw was a statue of a woman. She took them to the statue and they were surprised to see it was of the same woman that was in the library. He asked Nana who she was, to which she didn't remember anything about her. But when she saw her first, she heard her duty was to protect. There was only one word, but she kind of knew what she needed to protect. It was obvious that the stone statue didn't talk, but it was still a fragment in her memory, one she felt important as. Heel felt sorry for her, and he spoke up to her that she might be able to do her duty to protect without her memories. But he told her that she should regain her memories at the very least about who that person of the statues really was, since she seemed to be someone important to Nane. Others were glad to hear Heel's words for Nane, but she declined not knowing what he wanted her to do, since from her systematic thinking, his argument lacked any solid foundation behind it. He was flinched by hearing that, and tried to explain to her about the importance of feelings but he didn't know the right way to go about it. Then Nana noticed something, and turned back to the statue. She went closer to it, and Heel followed after her asking what happened. Nana then stated that she hadn't paid much attention to something on the statue, since she didn't know what it meant, and when Heel watched what she was talking about, he was himself left shocked about it. Nana then asked him about this big coincidence, what the sign of his crest of the cave king was doing on the statue, and what exactly he was. 